whole show. The running game has to get better. They have three of the four receivers out. They got some young guys that must step up. They have to find a way to hold Rainey to less than 4.0 per rush. Easier said than done. Western Kentucky wants to come to Tampa and play power football against USF. We'll see how that works out. Our opening kickoff is next. Stay tuned. You could join us tonight on the Big East Network, Western Kentucky and South Florida from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. And Skip Holtz, as he's apt to do when winning the toss, has deferred. The Bulls will get the ball in the second half. Willie Taggart, a first-year head coach, youngest coach of the 120 teams in FBS, and he's very excited, Doug Graber, about being back in the area. So many Floridians on this Western Kentucky roster. A lot of talk this week in Bowling Green about tickets. Oh, absolutely, and of course, he's a Floridian himself. I mean, this is uh, this is the game of the year for Coach Taggart and all those Florida kids, 26 of them. Here's Skip Holtz in his first season at USF. You see his overall record, former head coach at Connecticut and most recently at East Carolina. He's done a wonderful job taking over for Jim Levitt. Got a lot of enthusiasm surrounding this program right now. I think he is a great fit for this program. He's a very personable guy. The team has taken very, very well to him. Uh, a totally different way of doing things than Coach Levitt, but he has been very, very successful at East Carolina. He's going to bring that right here to Tampa. A beautiful night here in Tampa. We expected some showers early in the day. They never really emerged. 87 degrees, cloudy. The wind is out of the east at five miles an hour. Macon Bonani, redshirt sophomore from Lake Wales, will handle the kicking chores. Eric Swartz will handle the place kicking chores tonight for South Florida. And for Western Kentucky, keep your eye on number 86, Willie McNeil. Second in the Sun Belt with a 25 yard per return average. He returned one for a touchdown from 90 yards against Kentucky. And this is McNeil and he will stay in the end zone. So the Hilltoppers will start first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Both of these teams have great kickoff guys. I think we'll see a lot of touchbacks tonight. K1 Jakes, redshirt sophomore from St. Augustine is the starting quarterback tonight for Western Kentucky. He started eight games last year, but did not start the game against USF. We have a flag on the play. Our officials tonight are from the Sun Belt Conference. Kicking team for 51. Five yard penalty, re-kick. All right, so we're gonna do it again. You know, and I've always felt this is a huge disadvantage to the kicking team. You've just- Mike, check, check. You've just run 80 yards down the field and you got to go right back and do it again. I think this is always, I feel, this is a great opportunity for a great kickoff return. Well, both of these teams have up-tempo, energetic head coaches. Skip Holtz wants to put that Florida game in his rearview mirror. And Willie Taggart, you know, we talked to him earlier this week, Doug. He's got an awful lot of enthusiasm. He's so excited about being back at his alma mater. And they would love to play well here. We, we asked him yesterday at the walkthrough about would he get a chance to get back to his stomping grounds in Bradenton? He said, nope, all business this weekend. Boy, what a personality uh, that young man is right there, Coach Taggart. Uh, man, he just exudes enthusiasm. He's got a lot of great sayings. I think he is a great, great choice as the new Western Kentucky head coach. Now, McNeil had a 90-yard kickoff return touchdown against UK. He also had one of 60 yards called back by a penalty in that game, and he'll start from the one-yard line. He comes out across the 20, out to the 25-yard line, and now that's where the Hilltoppers will take over first and 10. Yeah, good coverage. That was a low-line drive kick. Nice job of covering that kick by the Bulls of South Florida. We're talking about K1 Jakes, the quarterback. I mentioned that he had eight starts last year, but USF was the home opener in Bowling Green for Western Kentucky last year. He played behind Brandon Smith in that game. So this will be the first real look. Many of the Bulls on defense will get a look at number six. Yeah, and this is a really a fun offense to watch. This is, even though Coach Taggart is young, this is an old-style NFL offense. And speaking of old-style, they'll go with a power eye on first down. Doyle, the tight end, comes in motion. Jake's on the rollout. Short throw, pass in and out of his intended receiver. Quinn Terrence Cooper couldn't hold it. Well, check that. That was Marcus Vasquez couldn't hold on that to that. And we'll check the lineups. 
for Western Kentucky. Bobby Rainey's had a fabulous season so far. Rod Johnson is the fullback. Cooper and Vasquez, the wide receivers. And Jack Doyle, a very, very good-looking tight end. Just a sophomore from Indianapolis. Offensive lineup, Jeff Rees at the left tackle spot. Conway Smith and King. Luke Stansfield is starting tonight at the left guard spot, subbing for the injured Michael Patterson. On second down, here's Rainey's first touch. And he goes off the right side for just a couple of yards. Give him a gain of one, and it's going to be third down and nine. You know, in, in this offense, all coaches are a product of their backgrounds. Of course, uh, Willie Taggart uh, was coaching at Stanford with Jim Harbaugh the last three years. Jim Harbaugh came from really an NFL background. This is an NFL rushing game in particular. A lot of eye formation, a lot of two-back sets. Uh, you know, and it's hard to defense because you don't see that in college football anymore. Jack Harbaugh, his last game was the 1AA National Championship in 2002. That's the only national championship that Western Kentucky's ever won. Time out. Western Kentucky. That is their first charge. All right, so Western Kentucky is going to take a timeout, and we'll take it with them. We'll step aside from Tampa, just underway from Raymond James Stadium, South Florida and Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky, USF, no score, 14.06 in our opening period. After the timeout, Western Kentucky now facing third and nine. Just converting 33% of their third down attempts in the first three games. That's 92nd best in the country. Jakes, play action. Good pocket, and he finds his tight end, Jack Doyle, for a first down. He's got it up at the 37-yard line. That's a gain of 11, and so they click on third and nine, Doug. Wow, you know, and, and South Florida played his zone, and that was a nice job of uh, Doyle. The sophomore tight end, he found the soft spot. He sat down right there, and Jaquan Jakes delivered the ball right on the money. Marshall Grissom, Terrell McLean up front, Williams, Barrington, and D.D. Lattimore. Raymond and Washington on the corner. Logist and Young's your safeties tonight for Mark Snyder's defense for the Bulls of USF. Jake's three-step drop. Pass is caught. Vasquez has it. And he is dropped by Lattimore. Makes the stop the redshirt freshman from Athens, Georgia. Quentin, uh, Quentin Washington uh, misses the tackle. Now just a three-step drop, cover three. They're going to hit that. But the missed tackle is what hurts right there. Throwing the football, Doug, has really been a problem in the early going for Western Kentucky. They are ranked 114th in the country in that category, only getting 120 yards passing. And you say, well, you know, look at the competition they're playing, but in the, all of those games, they have been behind early. Yes, they have. On second down. Ooh, high, high snap. snap. Jakes was able to collect it and move the pile forward. So instead of a, a disaster, he picks up two yards, brings it up to the 44-yard line, and it'll be another third down coming up for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, third and about uh, two and a half, a manageable third down. See it right here, very high snap from the gun. Of course, th th they're not a, a team that runs a tremendous amount of guns, so you know, you're gonna have some issues. Texas taking on UCLA. A lot of people did not give a nickel for the chances of UCLA to win this ball game today against Texas. Last time they went to Austin, meaning UCLA, they beat Texas 66 to three. That pretty much was it for Texas coach John Makovic. The next year they hired Mac Brown, and Texas has not looked back. Many people in Texas said we're going to get revenge against UCLA for that nastiness they put on our heads back in 1997. Uh, yeah, about that. Franklin, fake handoff. Prince is going to run it 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, UCLA! The Bruin quarterback with great faking takes the handoff up the middle and sprints to the left for a Bruin touchdown. UCLA ISP Sports Network with the call. Texas's 16-game home winning streak out the window. They have four turnovers today. UCLA puts it on them, 34-12. First road win for UCLA versus an AP top-10 team in 12 years. That's when they beat Arizona back in 1998. Mel, UCLA did this with only 27 yards passing. 
yet. They had two runners that were terrific today, Jonathan Franklin and Derek Coleman. They were really able to impose their will on this really good Texas defense. No question. We go back to game one at Kansas State. What was uh, what was Prince, uh, Kevin Prince at that point, nine for 26? Mm -hmm. And we said, you can't have that. Well, running the football, offensive line for UCLA getting it done. Jonathan Franklin was outstanding, the sophomore. Uh, and they had that dual threat as well with Coleman getting it done. So I think two backs that combined for a ton of yards and the fact that the turnovers and drop passes. Texas dropped some passes today that were critical. Mistakes on their part at home, maybe looking ahead to the Red River rivalry against Oklahoma next week. I don't know what it was to come out flat like they did and never be able to really pick it up during any course. So it's a lot of new young men playing for University of South Florida. Jakes with the fake and a well-designed tight end screen. And Jack Doyle takes it. Uh, easy victory for UCLA. Pretty amazing. This is one of the South Florida 38. Take a look at it now again. This is the counter pass. Uh, good poise right there. And again, uh, this tight end now, Jack Doyle is just a sophomore. He's 252. He is going to be a definite NFL prospect. He is an outstanding young tight end. Well, he came into play tonight as the leading receiver for the Hilltoppers with eight catches, and he's had two clutch grabs on this initial drive that continues now. Showing blitz and the pass just slipped out of the hands of Jakes and who knows maybe it's just a moisture it's a humid night here in Tampa. Well Jake 63 Jake 63 190 pounds sophomore from St. Augustine take a look at it here. Yeah the ball just uh, just came out of his hand he had an easy throw. And, of course, that was uh, Vasquez was the intended receiver. Ball slipped right out of his hand. All right, this is the 10th play of the drive, second down and 10. Western Kentucky took the opening kickoff. They have moved to the USF 38. Doyle comes in motion. And here's Rainey. And he was able to move the pile forward and do a 360 spin down inside the 35-yard line to the 32. And he is deceptively strong, especially when he makes contact. You know, the... He's got such a, there you see him right there walking back. He has such a low center of gravity. He is so strong. He's got a burst. He's got balance. He's got great vision. Uh, you know, you don't pile up the numbers that he's put in in the first three games without being a heck of a runner. And you know what? This offensive line has done a nice job, too. And they're starting out pretty well against this Bulls defense. All right. We'll see if Western Kentucky can pick up another critical third down on this opening drive. Directing traffic. Rod Johnson shifts in the backfield. Jakes. He's going to run it across the 30, and he is very close to the marker, and he may have it. This is going to be uh, totally dependent on the spot. He is very, very close, and he stuck it up in there. He, he knew what he needed for the first and 10. Yep, and they're going to have to bring in the chains on this one. He had Vasquez wide open on the zone adjust route and he just couldn't see him quite quick enough to get him the football. Key measurement here. You know what now Dave if they don't get it. Nope, well you take care of that they got it but I was going to say if they don't have it I bet coach Taggart would have gone for it. Yeah I think you're probably right. And he really does the uh, coach Taggart right there does most of the play calling himself. Take a look at it right here. Watch him. Nice job. Took a, pretty, took a pretty good lick right there as well from D.D. Lattimore, the linebacker. Three for three on third down conversions. Again out of the eye. And this time, the Bulls see the fullback down to the 25-yard line. Rod Johnson on the carry. And I kind of winked at Coach Lattimore the other day, uh, Friday, when we talked to him here in the stadium. I said, are you running the midline option? <laughs> he said, no, we don't run that. Not sure what it looked like to me. <laughs> Rod Johnson, senior from Lexington, Henry Clay High School. First chance he had to touch the ball. That was only his second carry of the year. He had a seven-yard gainer in their opener at Nebraska. Bulls coaches have to be a little bit concerned about the way Florida ran the ball against them two weeks ago in the swamp. They had 256 rushing yards. Here comes Rainey, and he is stopped in the backfield. Good penetration. 
by the line and Lattimore cleaned it up. And here comes another third down. Well, you know, this, this group of linebackers uh, for South Florida, D.D. Lattimore is just a redshirt freshman at the weak side linebacker. He can really, really run. The middle backer, Sam Barrington, is just a sophomore. Uh, this is, these are the next group of great linebackers here for South Florida. Those two guys have been very impressive. Uh, Jaquan Williams, the strong side linebackers, played very well. Mike Linares has played well as a backup middle backer. First time we've seen four wide, and now flags come in. And this will go against the Hilltoppers. Before the snap, false start, number 77. Five-yard penalty, third down. Well, you know, that was Wes Jeffries, the left tackle, and of course, uh, I saw Coach Latimer on the side. I'm not happy with that maneuver at all. But uh, again, you see him going from his playlist. The backup quarterback signal the plays in. Great opening drive by Western Kentucky. Oh, I mean, they're eating up a lot of clock. Yeah, they've gone over seven minutes on this opening drive. And you mentioned Wes Jeffries, both tackles, Jeffries and Preston King, two three year starters. Timeout. Western Kentucky. That is their second charge for the first half. Now, well, had a problem with the formation. Could not could not get lined up correctly in the formation. And uh, Coach Tiger not happy at all about that. Western Kentucky on the move on the opening drive at USF. No score. Forget Western Kentucky fans follow the men's basketball team to San Juan, Puerto Rico for the fourth annual Puerto Rico tip-off. November 18th through the 21st. Watch the Hilltoppers take on the North Carolina Tar Heels, the West Virginia Mountaineers, Tubby Smith's Minnesota Golden Gophers, and more. For tickets and travel, visit PuertoRicoTipoff.com. And the Puerto Rico Tipoff, take a look at some of the teams in this field. Western Kentucky, of course, they've had runs in the NCAA tournament the last couple of years. West Virginia coming off their trip to the Final Four, and North Carolina. PuertoRicoTipoff.com. That's how to get in touch with it. Third down and 12 after the second timeout of this opening drive for the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Bobby Rainey's alone sent back as Jakes operates from the gun. Jake stumbles as he goes back and throws that one into the ground. It looked as if he was trying to set up the screen, but the penetration just too much by the Bulls. Well, there was a receiver in the area. Uh, D.D. Lattimore, the linebacker, watch him here, number 34. He is all over this screen. He's right in the middle of it. He had to throw it away. And, uh, you know, Western Kentucky shot themselves in the foot that drive. And, of course, now lining up for the field goal. Casey Tinius, junior from Bowling Green, on to attempt a 47-yard field goal. One of one this year, had a 25-yarder against Nebraska. That's his only attempt. Long enough, but wide to the right. No good. So but Western Kentucky moved the football, Doug, but at a critical junction, they broke down. Yeah, they did. They had the penalty on the false start, and they couldn't get a formation lined up properly, and, and there goes that drive. B.J. Daniels and the USF Bulls get their first crack at the football when we come back to Tampa. our opening quarter here at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Western Kentucky moved the football, ran off half the opening period, but did not score. Now USF gets a chance to touch the ball for the very first time. There's a shot of the student section here at USF, largest in the Big East. Boy, they're packed. The whole student section is absolutely packed. The 12,500 student tickets gone every single game. You just love to see that. So here come the Bulls. Mo Plancher will start at the tailback spot. B.J. Daniels, redshirt sophomore from Tallahassee at the controls. They'll start with three wide receivers. Short screen out across the 40. Uh, Lindsey Lamar yep. was the guy, was the recipient of the screen. We saw a lot of this in the first two games, a lot of short passes, a lot of bubble screens, and Lamar's got speed to burn. Yeah, and, and uh, he, he is... Uh, Surely the fastest player on this team. Look at the good move there. 5'8", 164 pounds out of Hillsborough High School here in Tampa. 
He can fly. That converted running back. He was a running back last season. Now he's catching passes. Hand off to Plancher. On Plancher. Oh. Planted. What a hit. Keontae Young. Young with a huge hit. He's subbing for the injured Mark Santoro. Well, you want to uh, look at the, uh, the proper way to, to fill a hole. That's it right there. That is a form hit. Santoro was injured in the second half of the Hilltoppers loss at Indiana last week, and Young with a huge hit. Here's Plancher on the option pitch. Takes it up near the 43 yard line, so it'll be third down and 10. Yeah, trying to run the, the shovel pass right there, and of course, the thing that hurts that play is penetration, and the, really, it's a defensive lineman play. They read it perfectly, made a nice stop. Dontavia Bogan won't play tonight. He's out, but what an offensive line. Bass Warren, Genus, Hine, and Sims, all returning starters combined. They have 78 career starts. Here's Daniels over the middle, incomplete. Trying to get it to Evan Landy. And how about Western Kentucky? This is a defense that's been giving up 50 points a game, 119th in the nation, forces USF into a three and out. Clendon and Allen, and the tiny tackles, Allen and Martin, Quintarius Smith at the right end spot. Bullard leads the linebackers. And a lot of changes in the secondary tonight. Punt. Inside the five, still rolling oh. down at the <laughs> one-yard line. They waited till the last second. I thought the tip of that ball was going to cross the end line there. 57-yard punt for Justin brockhouse Khan. What a boot. Beautiful, beautiful spiral. Excellent, excellent coverage. That ball really should have been fielded by the return guy. And this is what can happen when it's not. Nice job right there, getting the ball down for South Florida. Hey, we before we start talking Webster, before we start talking about Western Kentucky's offense, just want to mention in their defensive secondary, they have four changes. They have two new corners tonight: Arius Wright and Tyree Robinson. And you saw Young, the strong safety, make the big hit on Plancher, and Kareem Peterson is starting at the free. So four new defensive starters in the secondary tonight for Western Kentucky. They passed the first test. We'll see how they do the rest of the night. Just trying to get a little operating room off their own goal line. Maybe a gain of about half a yard out to the one. It'll be second down and nine. You know, I always love to play action pass on first or second down down here in a, in a very simple route. Something to the outside. Play action movement pass. Give the quarterback a run pass option. Because it's really, really tough to run it in here. And we got a good look at number 65, the center for Western Kentucky a moment ago. That's Sean Conway, a redshirt freshman from Nashville. Redshirted last year, the projected starter at center, Derek Elder, left the team in the preseason because of chronic back problems. He was the projected starter. Here's Jakes throwing on the run, incomplete. And understandably looking for the tight end, Jack Doyle, with well, the pass was short. And now, what do, you, what do you call, coach, when it's third and nine from your own one yard line? Well, you know, it's something where you're going to get the ball out of the end zone. Here's the play action. Whoa, whoa. Lattimore uh, hit again. Lattimore again. Wow. K1 Jakes, welcome to Florida. Woo. Well, you were mentioning yesterday in some of our meetings with the assistant coaches for USF how the Bulls recruiting has really not only stepped up here in the state of Florida, but in the state of Georgia, too. And Lattimore looks like a real fine. He really does. Uh, again, he's a young guy, just a red shirt freshman. Well, Rainey is able to get it out near the five yard line. And Western Kentucky will have to punt the football. Well, you know, that first series offensively for USF, it, it, this has been the issue. You know, when B.J. Daniels starts moving, he, he, things just happen so fast. He's got to slow things down in his mind. He had a guy open. He just missed him. He's got to learn how to scramble and throw. Now Western Kentucky able to get that ball out of there. Terrence Mitchell from the 50. 40. Good Look return. Out. Look out. Trying to get the corner. Drag down at the 24-yard line. 
You know, USF blocked a punt and recovered it for a touchdown against Stony Brook in their opener. And this time, Terrence Mitchell able to make a 26-yard punt return to the 24-yard line. Take a look at it, true fresh, but you know, in the opening game, the punt returns were a problem. Uh, sit and drop one. A horns drop one. They went to the true freshman. It looks like uh, he's got himself a job back there. Terrence Mitchell. Well, this is how you would describe what good field position yeah, looks is, like. <laughs> this is good field position. Officially, it's the 23-yard line. And flags coming. The rush was coming off the corner. Before the stout, ball starts. 45, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Well, and that's you know, Kevin Guidry, the transfer tight end from East Carolina. Yeah, and offensive coordinator Todd Fitch is not going to be happy with these first four plays they've run, nor is that man right there, Coach Holtz. Well, we got the word from USF's coaches that they're going to use different tempos tonight in an attempt to throw off Western Kentucky, but they're just trying to get something started here. B.J. Daniels flush from the pocket. You know how elusive he can be. Knocked out inside the 15-yard line and thrown down. No flags. Well, Western Kentucky was very fortunate right there that they uh, didn't get a 15-yard penalty on that one. It was really, I don't think the official saw it. He threw him late, but he was way out of bounds. Take a look at it right here. But, but you know, he, he runs about a 4-5. He's about 215 pounds. And uh, let's see if he lowers the shoulder. Oh, that's a penalty right there. Yeah, that, that, that was uh, not a good move at all. That was Xavier's point, yep. So we're going to measure for the first down. Great opportunity for the Bulls to draw first blood here. Now, this has been an issue, though, Dave, for this offense, first and ten. But this has been an issue. If B.J. Daniels doesn't get it done, they don't get it done. They have to find some consistency in the running game, and they've got to have some of these young receivers step up and make some plays for them. You know, think about, contrast their opening drive tonight to their first drive against the Gators two weeks ago. That was a thing of beauty. Took nearly 10 minutes off that the clock. 90-something yard drive all yeah. the way down. 17 Beautiful plays drive. for a yep. touchdown. Yeah. So it's first and 10 at the 13. Fake to Plancher, and Daniels goes down. Out beyond the 20 yard line. Going to be marked down at the 21. That's a loss of eight. Yeah, he just, uh, he simply tried to plan off his inside foot there and found a soft spot in the turf and down he went. Take a look. He's running, going to run the counter pass. And again, his, uh, his left foot just went right out from under him as he tried to make that cut. Wonder if he didn't step on Plancher's foot as he was going by. Could have been, in any case, a big loss. Offset eye as Daniels goes under center this time. And here's Plancher off the right side. And he carries tacklers for two extra yards and gets down near the 16. And it'll be third and long. Well, you know, we talked in the open about Western Kentucky, the problems they've had on defense. I mean, they're giving up 494 yards a game. And the first two games, defensive coordinator Clint Bowen said it was hopeless. I mean, there was nobody was reading their keys. They were playing with their eyes. And I uh, thought he saw some light at the end of the tunnel against Indiana last week. And you know what? It looks like they had made a solid improvement again this week. Yeah, they gave up 536 total yards to Nebraska, 482 at UK, but held Indiana to just 100 rushing yards last week. Here's Daniels. Avoids one rusher. Going to tuck. What a great cut. And he is knocked out of bounds at the eight yard line, well short of the first down. And the field goal team is coming on for the Bulls. You know what? I was disappointed on that, that last play. Take a look at it right here. Once he starts scrambling, the receivers, you know what? They were blocking downfield all the way. Something was bad wrong with that play. Either the receivers were wrong or they executed the wrong play because all the receivers were blocking down the field. This will be a 26-yard attempt from the right hash by Eric Swartz. One of two on the year. No attempts last week against the Gators in Gainesville, and, and he missed it. Swartz missed it. He missed a 32-yarder against Stony Brook, and Western Kentucky's defense holds. 
Well, and, and I'll tell you, there was way too much penetration up front on that particular field goal attempt that came up from their right guard. And you see it right there, you see the penetration. That was Chaz Hine that got knocked back. And you just, you know, I'm not saying that's the reason they missed it, but that can be very distracting to a kicker. Of course, we tell the kickers, you shouldn't even see the rush, but believe me, they do. Well, Doug, let me ask you about the mindset of a team like Western Kentucky. You got a new coach, yes, but many of these guys have been around for all 23 of these losses. You know, the longer they hang around, the more confidence they get they can play with USF. Absolutely, and, I'll t and looking at them on tape, as well, look out here. Here's oh, Rainey. Rainey. Nice open field uh, tackle right there by Jarrell Young. But you're absolutely right. And as this team, this team is going to win some games this year. Believe me, th this is this is not a team that's going to go through the season and not win a football game as they get into their Sun Belt uh, schedule. But I'll tell you what, if uh, if USF lets them just hang, keep hanging around. Look out, because then all of a sudden the momentum goes that way. It's a very, very young team of the 65 players who have seen action in the first four games for Western Kentucky. 21 are red shirt or true freshmen. Here's K1 Jakes, rolls it out. Doyle took a huge hit at the marker. John Legist made the stop, and it'll be third in a yard. Now, John Legist is the guy in the secondary. He is the enforcer out there, no question about that. Watch this hit right here. Boom. Number eight, Legist. Uh, you know, this has been a very, very sloppy first quarter, though, for USF, offensively and defensively. And, of course, a lot of times, you know, when you come off of a bye week, they've had two weeks, and getting back into the speed of the game is an issue at times. Here's Rainey. And forward progress, looks like he has the first down at the 30-yard line. Going to be close, going to be real close. Depends on the exact spot. And it is a first yep. down. You mentioned that USF's coming off an off week. This is the second consecutive week that Western Kentucky has played a team coming off an off week. In fact, Indiana last week when they traveled to Western Kentucky, they had been idle for 16 days before that game. Yeah, that's tough. You know, early in the season, you, you, as a coach, you don't like a bye week early in the season. You'd much rather have it later in the season as players get dinged up and stuff, and you, you need a break. Deep handoff to Rainey again, trying to get wide, can't do it. That was John. Linares. John Legist that was chasing it from the backside that brought a safety blitz. I'm sorry. That looked like Linares made the stop. Motion is the call against Western Kentucky. Stops the clock with just eight seconds to go in a quickly played first quarter. Yeah, I'm sure they'll decline this. Illegal formation. Five men lined up in the backfield. Penalty is declined. Check it out. Uh, defensive coordinator Mark Snyder, he, he told us we're going to run a lot of safety blitzes, and that was one right there. And that was, if, if you're bringing a safety blitz, number eight. That is the end of the first quarter. Tie back. Legist is the guy you want to bring, believe me, because he will flat get after it and mix it up in there. Well, USF came into this game as a four touchdown favorite. We've got 15 minutes in the books, no score. Back to Tampa for our second quarter and more in a moment. Set to start the second quarter, Western Kentucky and USF surprisingly scoreless. And maybe some of the miscues by both teams. Here's Western Kentucky's version. Well, they've had a bunch of them. Of course, a high snap and the gun right there. Ball out of the uh, quarter, out of Jakes's hand. Stumbling around. Screen well covered. And both teams missed makeable field goals. Been a very, very sloppy first quarter. You have to, you have to tell it the way it is. I mean, very sloppy. Uh, in particular, I would say by USF. So Western Kentucky has the football as we begin the second quarter, facing second down and 14. Rainey came in motion, empty backfield for Jake's first time tonight. Jake's right down the seam, incomplete. That and he was trying to get more. that. He's trying to get that ball to Rainey. 
and D.D. Lattimore was all over. Great coverage by the young freshman linebacker. You know, Doug, we'd like to get the impressions of camp and of the early portion of the season from the offensive line from Western Kentucky, but we can't. They're in the midst of a media boycott. <laughs> they are not speaking to the media collectively as a group until they win a game. Jack Doyle, the tight end, is their sort of spokesman. Third down and 14. Jakes. Check this out. Coming back the other way. If he's got the corner, he's got room. Across the 30, makes one good move. Up to the 34-yard line, brought down far shy of the first down. Well, that was well defensed. And, of course, uh, you know, that, that's exactly uh, what Mark Snyder, defensive coordinator, wants to do. Three-man front. No place to go. That was Craig Marshall that really was the first defender that forced it to cut all the way back. And, you know, against the speed of South Florida, you're, you're just not going to be successful cutting plays back. And there you see Mark Snyder, defensive coordinator. Hendricks break field with the punt. And it takes a Western Kentucky roll and is marked down at the 29-yard line. That's a 39-yard punt and no return. USF has the football when we come back. And USF scoreless 14.05 until halftime here at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. Skip Holtz trying to find the answer offensively so far tonight. Demetrius Murray has checked in at the tailback spot as B.J. Daniels goes under center on first and 10 from their own 29. And here's Murray. Slips one tackle. And the more we see a Murray, we just like him more and more, Doug. He's really been impressive. Every time he hits the field, you know, I, I, he's a north and south runner, 5'10", about 200 pounds. Another of the young men out of Georgia here. Buford, Georgia. Had 11 carries for 62 yards and a touchdown two weeks ago in the swamp against the Gators. Second and six. Yeah, I'll pick up a four. It'll be second down and six. Tight formation this time for the Bulls. Murray again. Oh, he hit the hole really quickly. And he spins out across the 40-yard line. He's got a first down up at the 43. That's a 10-yard gain. Well, just what the doctor ordered. They have to get that running game going. They have to take some of the load off of B.J. Daniels. Take a look at this gash. Excellent job. Uh, that was uh, Warren at left guard. It really made a key block to Spring Murray. Uh, Jeremiah Warren, 6'4", 314 pounds, just a sophomore. He was really the surprise of the O-line last year. Showing blitz, Murray again, kicking it outside. Midfield and more, inside the 40 and bumped out of bounds, and a late flag comes in. And this is gonna go against USF. So the penalty is gonna neutralize that gainer by Murray. Holding. Holding. Number 80 on the offense. 10-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Still first down. Now that was Bravo Brown, the freshman, the true freshman. Walk, walk on. on. Take a look at it. He's right at the top of your screen, number 80. Take a look at it right here. Well, you know what? He, he just held on to the jersey after he turned his back. Otherwise, uh, you know, that really wouldn't have been called. That's just a freshman mistake. So it's first and eight. The line of scrimmage for the Bulls, their own 45. There's an audible by Daniels. Murray, the lone setback, short drop, pass is caught. The reception is made up to the 48-yard line. P.J. Knowles. So Knowles getting some time. The redshirt sophomore from Las Vegas makes the catch. Big 6'6", six, 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 240-pound wide receiver. Hey, Doug, you really got to get down your depth chart when you're talking about the Bulls wideouts available for tonight's game. Dontavia Bogan is out. He was in a boot all week long after turning an ankle against Florida. No Sterling Griffin, no A.J. Love. Walk-on freshman Bravo Brown is starting tonight, and T.J. Knowles is his backup. Here's Murray to the right for the first time. 
And he finds some room up near the first down marker at the 47-yard line of Western Kentucky. Well, you know, Murray has come in here. Now he's given this offense a boost. I mean, he showed some burst. He's made some plays. Uh, exactly what the doctor ordered. They needed something to get this offense going and take the load off of B.J. Daniels. Now, Mo Plancher started at the tailback spot tonight for the Bulls. Sixth year senior. And he had some shoulder problems in camp. And now we get a look at Murray, and he's been impressive. And here he comes again. Cuts it back inside, a first down and more to the 35-yard line, a gain of 12. And I like this by Todd Fitch. This is a veteran offensive line for South Florida. Uh, this is a team they should ball. What a great pot by Samson Genus, the center. Wow. But uh, again, they, they have to get this offensive line coming off the football, getting the back running north and south, uh, because this is a team they should be able to run the football on. Bravo Brown to the top of your screen. Flanker to that side. One back set. Murray again, and this time they've got him corralled. Kenny Martin. Kenny Martin and those two guys inside, they call them the tiny tackles. Yeah. Jamarcus Allen, 5'11", 270 pounds, redshirt sophomore from Orlando, and Martin, he just made the stop, 6'2", 276, a redshirt sophomore from Orlando. They know how to get back down here. They know it takes 14 hours in the car. <laughs> These are the two guys who are begging their teammates for tickets to this game tonight. The two, the two young guys, both from Orlando. Second and nine. Saw a lot of this formation against Florida two weeks ago. B.J. Daniels looked comfortable in the pocket to completion to the 29-yard line. So Farron Horns makes the reception. Saw the strength of uh, B.J. Daniels' arm right there. I mean, that was a rope. He fired that Buffy in there low and hard. Got to believe that here in the first half, Bulls are going to find a way to hand the ball off to Lindsey Lamar. He is lined up as a flanker to the top of your screen now as they go with three wide receivers on third down and three. Murray is a wing to Daniels to his left. Let's... Blitz coming off the corner. Daniels able to step up, and he does not have the first down. He picked up a yard to the 28, but the Bulls needed to get inside the 26 for the first. Yeah, the full outside blitz, and of course, uh, really, Daniels did all he could do right there. Mike Majors. Majors, the leading tackler for Western Kentucky, has forced another field goal attempt. So Swartz, this time from the left hash, this will be a 46-yard attempt. Brockhouse Khan is the holder. On the way, no good. He missed it to the right. Well, both kickers 0 for 3 here tonight. So the plot thickens, and the scoreboard is empty. 8.48 till halftime, Western Kentucky, USF, no score. Tampa, and there is the end zone where you can see the logo of the Tampa Bay Bucks and then the Bucks, Buccaneers spelled out in script, waiting to be painted. The Buccaneers will host the Pittsburgh Steelers tomorrow afternoon. If it threatens rain, they may paint the field tonight. If not, they'll wait till the morning. This is where USF, of course, plays all of its home games. Rainey on the carry, knocked down. Mike Linares as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Now the, the USF team, and watch Linares fill this hole right here. Man. Outstanding. See Linares, he is just a uh, sophomore out of Lake Mary. Florida. Second down and 10. K1 Jakes remains in at quarterback. Bulls rushing four. Passes caught. Eight yard gain. Kayvon Webster. So Vasquez made the catch and Webster planted him. And 
third and short coming up. Third and two. Western Kentucky has had the best drive of the night. They took the opening kickoff and moved inside the 30 yard line of the Bulls, missed a field goal. The Bulls have missed two field goals. They missed a short field goal after they started their second drive of the night at the Western Kentucky 23. Here's Jakes, too tall. Tried to hit the slant pattern and just put too much mustard on it. And that was Kayvon Webster on the coverage. And, you know, he was playing the receiver and saw the ball at the last second. Had he seen the ball earlier, he, he really had a sure pick right there. Jake's last week against Indiana, 13 to 20, 144 yards and a touchdown, but hasn't been that accurate throwing the football here tonight. Mitchell is back to receive the kick. Hendricks Brakefield, Richard freshman from Nashville, set to punt the ball away. He had a 60 yarder last week against Indiana, his career long. Sent this one to the wide side and it goes out of bounds at the 21 yard line. You know, a breakfield, <laughs> he has got a cannon for a leg. And uh, that was an interesting kick because uh, really had, uh, had Mitchell not gotten to that football, that could have easily rolled all the way down inside the five yard line. It's a 45 yard punt, no return. That 60 yarder that Brakefield had last week against Indiana. That was the longest punt for Western Kentucky in five years. Yeah, you know, that last punt was by design. I mean, he, he tried to hit a line drive right down to the far and left corner, South Florida's left corner of their end zone. Murray took the football on the dive, and Bullard made the stop. Chris Bullard, senior. Strong side linebacker, new starter this year. He had three games last year, his best three games last year, in which he had five tackles each. One of them was USF. It was the home opener for Western Kentucky last year at LT Smith Stadium in Bowling Green. Gain of one, second down and nine. Showing blitz. And here they come. Murray. Boy, perfect call down the sidelines, midfield and more, knocked out of bounds. Have and a, a flag, mask. it's gonna be a face mask. 15 more gonna be tacked on from the 39 yard line. And did USF have the perfect play <laughs> called for that blitz coming from the Hilltoppers? You, you called it, Dave. They had a blitz coming from the wide side of the field. And of course, uh, USF had the toss sweep into the sideline, into the boundary, away from the blitz. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 29. 15 yards will be tacked on to the end of the run. Pushed out. Take a look at it now. You see the, the blitz is coming from the left, your left side of the screen, and you can't quite see it there, but uh, again, Demetrius Murray, pretty obvious. Oh, my. <laughs> that, that was, was a, a horse collar. That, that was a horse collar and a face mask on the same play. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Demetrius Murray with a big gainer. Cousin of Garrison Hurst, the former Georgia Bulldog star, one of six kids in his family. So he knows not to hesitate when he sees something good. Evan Landy gets his first opportunity to catch the football, takes it down to the 16 yard line. Yeah, and again, the corner's playing off. He's just going to take it and throw it out there as fast as he can and let Landy try to make, get a guy miss in space. Second down and two. Eight yard gain. Quanteria Smith, sophomore from Loganville, Georgia, came over from his defensive end spot to make the tackle. Second and two. Great opportunity for our first points of the night on this drive by USF. Plancher, right side, he's got the first down. And Mo Plancher, he, now that time he lowered his shoulders, went north and south, and got the tough yards. Sixth year, of course, is as a freshman. He had a, a terrible ACL. He's had tremendous injury problems. Hung with the program. And here he is now as a six-year senior. Get a, a, really a good chance to play. We were just talking about that last night. It was the opener here in Tampa against McNeese State. Same night that Matt Grothy made his debut. And here's Plancher inside the five. Dive into the end zone. Touchdown, USF.
excellent push by the offensive line. Take a look at it right here. Really good job by the offensive line. Boy, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus at center 62. He is an outstanding, outstanding football player. He, he will definitely play in the National Football League. He's got great feet and great athletic ability at the center position. Second rushing touchdown of the year. Swartz tacks on the extra point, and someone has finally scored. Mo Plancher had his best career game last year against Western Kentucky with 115 rushing yards. He goes in for six, seven nothing Bulls. Here on the sidelines, not real talkative, doesn't have to be. Does his talking on the field, 13 yard touchdown run, first score of the game. You know, the interesting thing is uh, he ran a lot better after uh, Murray. After Murray came <laughs> into the second quarter, uh, he ran a lot tougher and a lot more north and south. There's nothing like competition. Running backs, I don't care what position you have, there's nothing like it. Seven plays, 79 yards in just over two minutes. Plancher, the final 13 for our first touchdown of the night. Here comes McNeil. He has got speed to burn from Bradenton. And trust me, we can, we can tell you this from our conversations with the USF head coaching staff. They were well aware of his ability. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They knew all about Mr. McNeil. That, again, was uh, Linares made a nice tackle on that kickoff. Another look at the TD. Boy, look at Genus right there. What oh. a block at the center position. He is a great athlete. He's 300 and, uh, and let's see, 15 pounds. He's only 6'1", but wow, has he got great feet. Can he adjust on the run? He's an athlete playing that center spot. K1 Jakes under center, just under 50 yards passing, nearly lost the football. Botched exchange between the redshirt sophomore quarterback from St. Augustine, Florida, and Sean Conway, the redshirt freshman center from Nashville. You know, I can't help but think, Dave, all the Florida kids on the Western Kentucky ro roster. We asked Coach Taggart about that game uh, when he was a player here for Western Kentucky when they beat USF. And he said that was the game of his career. I mean, his family were here, his team was here, his high school coaches were here. Uh, it's the same thing for all these kids on the Western Kentucky roster from the state of Florida. I want to follow up on that after we take a look at this play. Here's Rainey reading his blocks beautifully, still on his feet, up to the 30-yard line. That was about a seven-yard gain. Really did well to follow his blocks there. Third down play coming up. Think about this, Doug. That last year, they won no games. Here's Rainey. Just watch him keep this play alive. Keep the play alive. Keep the play alive and finally find a little bit of hole. Last year, this football team won no games. They've lost 23 games in a row. Despite that, Western Kentucky had the number one recruiting class in the Sun Belt Conference. Ten of the 18 players committed are from the state of Florida. Yeah, and that's all due to Coach Taggart. Third and four, three-step drop. Vasquez got it won the battle at wow. midfield nice catch well he was well covered George that, Baker that was a great throw and a great catch a very well covered he fit it right in there and and really that was the receiver Vasquez take a look at it right here he's in a press coverage just a little fade route nice job of finding the football and pulling it in I think it's safe to say our halftime guest has arrived Stan Heath the basketball coach at USF is here Big supporter of the football program. He's got things going in basketball as well here at USF. We'll talk to him at halftime. First and 10 from the 49. Jake's three-step drop. And when in doubt, look for the guy uh, his head coach calls Jack Bauer. That's Jack Doyle, the tight end for Western Kentucky. He said Jack Bauer can do anything. Yeah. He can always get it done of 24 fame. So Doyle, the team captain. Picks up four on that reception. Second down and six. Just a sophomore. Turn under three minutes to go here in the half. Western Kentucky only has one timeout. Remember, they burned two of them on their opening drive. Jake's on the play action. Throwing on the run. Pass is caught. It's Doyle again. And he's got the first down up to the 32-yard line. So Western Kentucky positioning themselves to score as we get closer to halftime. Well, Kwan Jakes is a smart guy because that's the guy you want to get the football to. 6'6", 
Take a look at this big tight end. Watch his athleticism here. Play action pass, sits down in the zone. Now watch this. Watch him lower that shoulder and turn up field. Hand down, balance. That's a 6'6 six, six guy. That may have been the best looking play for Jakes tonight. McNeil, he's got tons of speed from Bradenton, just a freshman. He's at the top of your screen as they operate from the eye. Hand off to Rainey. And the Bulls are waiting for him. It's pork chop, the nose tackle. Cody Gris Corey Grissom and the guy they call the dancing bear right next to him, Terrell McLean. Terrell McLean is a very, very impressive for South Florida, 6'3", 310, senior. He's definitely going to have an opportunity to play football someplace next year. Really tremendous feet, can really run. You know, it's amazing. The NFL prospects that just keep coming out of this defense every single year, unbelievable. USF over the last 13 years has put 48 players in the NFL. They have 12 players on current NFL rosters. Know where to go that time. On the handoff to Rainey. And speaking of which, here's a look at some of the Bulls that are in the NFL. And then many of these guys, you take a look at Nate Allen, Jerome Murphy, George Selvey, Jason Pierre-Paul. These were all members of the team last year. Yeah, five members. Look at that. Mike Jenkins uh, with Dallas was a high draft choice. Jason Pierre-Paul, first round draft choice. Anthony Henry. Wow. Clock is running. Inside of a minute to go. Third and long. Jakes incomplete. Jarrell Young knocked the football away, and now it's fourth down. Yeah, that was a, you know, it, it, Jarrell Young as a safety has got great coverage skill. This is a blitz, man to man. He's man on the wide receiver, McNeil, all over him. You know, and I saw that on tape in the Florida game. He's got great man to man coverage skills. He covered the Florida wideouts very well. Uh, unusual for a safety. Casey Tinius on to attempt the field goal. This will be a 50-yard attempt from the right hash. He's already had one miss tonight. Short, never had a chance. And the Bulls will take over and have all three of their timeouts remaining. Tinius really did not get a good crack at that. And again, there was excellent penetration up front uh, by the South Florida defensive front. Take a look at it here. Watch the penetration right there. And I'll tell you, look at that. Uh, hey, kickers aren't supposed to see that. You coach them not to see that. Believe me, they see it. Well, Tinius, a, a great family background at Western Kentucky. His dad was on the cross-country team, 1974, second in the nation. His mom is in the school's Hall of Fame, Athletic Hall of Fame for tennis. B.J. Daniels' pass is intercepted. Picked off. All the way down to the 10 yard line goes Young. Keontae Young with the, he stepped right in front of Mo Plancher and took it all the way down to the 14 yard line. 30 seconds to go, plenty of time to get something done with the football. You know, and, and you have to have confidence in your quarterback that in this situation, he's going to see the safety there and not make that throw. That ball should have been thrown further outside and a nice job by Keontae Young. Wow, so four interceptions for Daniels last week against Florida. That's his first one of the night. A huge play. Could be a huge momentum swing in this game if Western Kentucky can cash it in. They have one timeout to work with and 30 seconds. Line of scrimmage is the 12. Jakes. McNeil was out there and the pass was just too wide. And again, that was John Legist putting all kinds of pressure on K1 Jakes. But, you know, Mark Snyder has brought uh, Legist a bunch tonight from that safety spot. Yeah, the quarter, uh, you know, that's a tough throw going to the left, but especially, <laughs> especially with. A Legist right in your face. Not a real clean release, no, a that, shot put uh, style. That, that wasn't real pretty. All right, second down and 10. Clock is stopped. Hilltoppers holding on to that timeout. Vasquez to the bottom of your screen. McNeil to the top as they operate from the eye. 
Blitz coming. Jakes. And that's going to be ruled an incomplete pass. Guess who? And it was Logist again. And Logist went right by a running back who should have picked him up on that blitz. Got a flag down. And they're going to rule that a fumble. One official had it as an incomplete pass. They're going to rule that as a, a fumble all the way back to the 24-yard line. Yeah, they picked up the flag, and I think. Timeout. Western Kentucky. That is their third and final timeout of this half. 30-second timeout. All right. Second timeout. All right, so, Doug, the officiating crew tonight for this game is from the Sun Belt. The video review officials tonight are from the Big East. We saw them. wonder if they're going to take another look at that play. One official ruled that immediately as an incomplete pass, yet the ball was spotted down there at the 23-yard line. Well, the Big East crew is looking at this upstairs right now. Let's take a look. Now, you know, to me, I thought his arm was going forwards, but it, it is very, very close. All right, we bring, we're being told by our production crew that the, the Big East officiating crew, the video review is not taking place on this play. And that was ruled a fumble on the field. Well, doesn't matter now. 12, 11 seconds to go. All right, no timeout, so you can't take a sack here. And all kinds of flags on the field and a lot of pointing. Now, if you're Western Kentucky here, you're going to want to take one shot down the field, either get out of bounds or throw it in the end zone or throw it out of the end zone. Before the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. This drive started at the 12-yard line, and now Western Kentucky is nearly out of field goal range. Right, and of course, uh, Tinius has already missed two field goals tonight. They've had a hard time blocking the South Florida front on field goals. Not a good situation for Western Kentucky. McNeil to the top, Vasquez to the bottom. Graney is a wing to Jake's left. No timeouts. Here comes the blitz. blitz. Jake's throws, and his receiver fell down at the 10-yard line. That was McNeil, incomplete. Not a good throw. Not a good throw at all by Jake's the receiver. Was trying to work back to the football, but McNeil uh, just couldn't keep his feet trying to get back. Yeah, he, he's struggling throwing the football. That is not pretty right there. So for Casey Tinius, this is his third field goal attempt of the first half. It's a 45-yard attempt from the right hash. Watch the penetration up front. They've been getting close all night. High snap. And he can not hook it in. Just wide. That one did have the distance, but it sails wide, and it's the final play of the first half. So USF, the Bulls have the lead. Probably not as large a lead as many of their fans would like or expected, but a lead nonetheless, and they're pitching a shutout against Western Kentucky. Hilltoppers have lost 23 consecutive games, but down just seven at the break here in Tampa. ESPN3.com College Football Halftime Report is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Welcome to ESPN3.com's Halftime Report presented by Capital One. I'm Cassidy Hubbard alongside Christian Fourier. We'll get you back out to the second half in a few moments. But first, realignment news never stops. It looks like the Pac-10 is technically going to be the Pac-12 next year. Colorado is surrendering more than $6 million in Big 12 revenue in order to join the Pac-10 in June of 2011. It was previously announced that Utah would be joining the conference next season as well. What this means is that the new 
Pac-12 will start play in 2011 with two divisions instead of playing one year as an 11-team conference. The Pac-10 is also talking about hosting a title game, and some of the sites for the game being discussed are Glendale, Arizona, Los Angeles, Seattle, and Las Vegas. These issues are expected to be decided on when school and Pac-10 administrators meet in October, and obviously the 2011 schedule will have to be tweaked as well. One topic that's probably not going to be discussed in that meeting, whether or not USC can participate in the proposed title game. ESPN Los Angeles.com writer Mark Saxon inquired about the Trojans' eligibility for that game. I sent an email to the Pac-10 and received a response that no, they're, they're simply ineligible for the game. Um, I think that it just raises too many questions. You know, if, if they play in a, a Pac-12 title game and, and they win, and then they cannot go on to a bowl game. Well, what do they do with that automatic berth? Does it go to the loser? Uh, you know, it's just, it's just too many questions to answer, and I think, you know, they're, they're simply barred from playing in the game. Christian, technically, the Trojans are banned from playing in a bowl game, and a championship game really isn't a bowl game, and they're not allowed to play in 13 games. <laughs> if they were to limit their schedule to 11 games, these are some, yeah. some loopholes, so is this fair? Yeah, there's a lot of loopholes, but I think fair's got nothing to do with it right now. They're banned from postseason play. Just because uh, this isn't technically a postseason game, we all know what it is. And there's no way it's too convoluted for them to be a part of it. I'm sorry, it's the difference between the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. The letter of the law says, listen, you can't play in any postseason games. Well, USC says, hmm, well, this isn't technically a postseason game, so we can play in it. But the spirit is like, listen, you guys know what you did. You know you can't do it, so don't even try. Well, it seems like USC can't trick their way into the game, so... Unfortunately. They, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> it's too bad for them. Well, and speaking of trickery, I still can't get over that stunning Michigan State win over Notre Dame in OT last Saturday. And it's our Capital One Cup impact performance of the week. The play called Little Giants. The fake field goal where punter Aaron Bates connected with Charlie Gant to give the Spartans a 34-31 overtime win. What a gutsy call. Remember to tune in tonight to College Football Final to find out what the Capital One Cup impact performances are from today's games. Then log on to ESPN.com slash Capital One Cup to make your vote. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at some of the highlights and lowlights of today's action. Stick around. UAB taking on Tennessee in Knoxville. First quarter, Blazers down seven. Watch the flea flicker. You called it. Brian Ellis finds Mike Jones for the 52-yard touchdown. Oh, watch him snatch this ball out of the air. Drag his man in for the touchdown. Nice play. He ties the game at seven. Fourth quarter, UAB down eight now. David Isabel rushes for the six-yard touchdown. After the two-point conversion, the score is tied at 23. 43 seconds left in the game. UAB with a chance to win. Josh Zahn already missed Four field goals in the game, on for the 54-yard field goal, and he misses wide right. So we head to overtime. Now double overtime, UAB up 29-26, and Matt Sims finds Denarius more in the end zone. Great catch by him, even great job by the quarterback, and him catching this ball. They're so excited. They're going to him, bring him off the field just like Rudy Ruger. Look at him. Good Rudy reference. Tennessee wins a thriller, 32-29. Number seven, Texas and UCLA meeting for the first time since 1998. Second quarter, UCLA punting on their own 49. Texas is Curtis Brown receiving, and he would fumble the ball, where UCLA would recover it at the Texas four-yard line. Turnovers kept UCLA in this game. Texas had four of them, and UCLA got 13 points off those three of those turnovers. Speaking of, a couple of play later on the same drive, UCLA second and goal. Kevin Prince finds a diving Ricky Marvray. They didn't throw it much in this game, but when they did, they made it count. Third quarter, Jonathan Franklin runs right through the Texas defense for an 11-yard score. UCLA goes up 20-3. to Less than a minute to go in the third quarter, quarterback Kevin Prince fakes the handoff and keeps it himself, rushing 38 yards untouched for the score. That is the number one rush defense that UCLA is running through. The Bruins pull off the upset and hand the Lang Longhorns their first loss. Number
number 21, Michigan, taking on Bowling Green. Denard Robinson came into this game leading the nation in rushing and total offense, and he didn't miss a beat in the opening drive. Robinson scoring on a two-yard touchdown run. Next Wolverine drive, Robinson again, and this time he takes it 47 yards to the house. Yeah, and I know he's an athlete and he's hard to tackle, but Bowling Green, you got to do a better job. That was pathetic. Robinson rushed for 128 yards on five carries in the first quarter, but later in the quarter, Robinson would break free for a 46-yard run, and he gets knocked out of bounds and would hurt his knee. Yeah, you see this tackle, just kind of doing it kind of awkwardly, falls on that field turf, but he's fine, he's, he's tough. It doesn't appear to be a serious injury. He would remain on the sidelines for the rest of the game, and Robinson's roommate, Devin Gardner, would fill in. Gardner gets it to Jeremy Gallon, who would run in 11 yards for the score. That's Gardner's first career touchdown. And then later in the third quarter, Tate Forcier, last year's starter, would come in. He rolls right and finds a wide open John McCoglin for the score. Everybody got involved in this in this game, scoring touchdowns. The only person who did it, I think, was the water boy. Michigan gets off to a 4-0 start for the second consecutive season. Coming up, there's just something so awesome about mascots, especially when they do crazy things. You won't want to miss this video after the break. Welcome back to the ESPN3.com Halftime Report presented by Capital One. This video went viral this week. It's Ohio University's Rufus the Bobcat tackling Ohio State's <laughs> Brutus the Buckeye during last weekend's game. 19-year-old Brandon Hanning said he'd been planning this attack since he became the mascot. He has since been relieved of his <laughs> mascotting duties. Oh, man. If you're the Ohio State mascot, are you in your head or thinking, what the heck is going on? Yeah, it, it was classic. Sneak though. attack. Yeah. That video obviously blew up this week, so it got us thinking of some of the other standout moments in mascot history. Because, well, why not? This is actually kind of a sad moment. Cabman riding Saber before Virginia Tech's game versus TCU. Oof. Yeah, what you need to do is, I don't know why people falling off horses or tripping make me laugh, but if you zoomed into his face to see, he knew it was coming, but he couldn't stop it. Check this out. Ugga, one of my favorite mascots, just takes a bite out of Auburn receiver Robert Baker. He's like, no, you, you can't score against us. He just <laughs> goes, yup. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you know that the trainer is probably saying bad dog, bad dog. But I bet you anything, as soon as he got inside, he gave him a treat for yeah. doing what he should do. Exactly. It takes a new meaning to a, a, a rivalry. So yeah. I love Aga, though. He's so cute. He really is. All right, that's all the time we have on ESPN3.com's Halftime Report, presented by Capital One. Make sure to tune in to College Football Final to see this week's Capital One Cut Impact Performance nominees. I'm Cassidy Hubbard. He's Christian Fourier. Let's send you back now to the second half. Uh, is the best team in the Big East. They're picked to win it. I, I think that a lot of teams, that whichever team stays healthy and gets a quarterback going, I, I think they all have legitimate chances. Hendricks Brakefield will kick it off for Western Kentucky. Kayvon Webster is back to receive the kick for USF. And our third quarter's underway. Second half underway, USF with the ball on a 7-0 lead, and Webster's going to bring it out from five yards deep. And he is going to be brought down at the 18-yard line. Webster trying to make a play, did not get back to the 20. Yeah, and I think that was a bad decision because not only was the ball, you know, halfway through the end zone, uh, but he had to run a long way to get it. So he had no head of steam to get started. And you saw Keontae Young make the special teams tackle. He made a big interception at the end of the first half, raced it all the way back to the Bulls' 12-yard line. But Western Kentucky... A combination of the Bulls defense and miscues on their own, unable to take advantage and missed a third field goal. Here's Mo Plancher. Plancher, you really have to like the way he's always going forward as he goes off the right side. Stop made by the strong side linebacker, Chris Bullard. And I definitely think that's going to be the key for South Florida. Let that offensive line come off the football. Take a look at him right here. They did not get the linebacker blocked. And of course, he's going to make that, but still, four yard gain. We'll take that. Chaz Hine and Jake Sims working that side of the offensive line for the Bulls. Again, it's Plancher. Nice cut in the backfield. Across the 25, up near the 26, where it'll be third down and two. And we've got a flag down on the field. Pick that flag up. No penalty on the place. Third and two. 
you know, and South Florida has not gone at all to their no huddle offense yet tonight. They've been in the huddle all night long. And uh, I, to change pace, I would expect them to do that at some point. Bravo Brown to the bottom of the screen. Here's Plancher. And Plancher spinning forward, does pick up the first down, or looks, well, it depends on the spot. Looked like he had the 29-yard line made. Yep, they just signaled first down. And that was all Plancher. I yeah. mean, really, that was a nice move he made, a little spin move right at the end of that run to get the first down. And just like I expected, uh, Coach Holtz and offensive coordinator Todd Fitz, hammer time. Let's come out and run the football, fellas. Tenth first down of the game for the Bulls. Fake it to Plancher this time. Here's Daniels. All kinds of time right down the seam. And the pass yep. was intended for Landy, and a flag is down. Interference or defensive holding coming up against the Hilltoppers. Yeah, no question about that call. Landy was uh, was pretty well covered, but the ball was well thrown, I thought. They definitely grabbed him. Whether they called it holding or interference, either one, they're both just as effective. Pass interference, number 46 on the defense. That's the free safety, Kareem Peterson. Yeah, take a look at this now, folks. Watch him right here. He's face guarding him. He doesn't see the football. Wraps him up pretty good right there. Western Kentucky a little bit short in the defensive secondary tonight. Mark Santoro, the strong safety, injured in the second half against Indiana. Not available. Ryan Beard from right there in Bowling Green is with the team but has a deep thigh bruise and has not played. Peterson is playing the free safety spot tonight for Western Kentucky. Keeping it on the ground, it's Plancher. Give him two yards up to the 45. And coming into the game tonight, Western Kentucky decided to start a pair of new cornerbacks. They took Darius Brooks and Jamal Forrest off the corners and replaced them with true freshman number 21, Arius Wright. And Tyree Robinson, another freshman from Dundee, Florida. Four new starters in the secondary for Western Kentucky. Two because of injury. Uh, two because of not being happy with the performances. Four new starters. And despite that, USF has only thrown for 32 yards to this point. Second down and eight. Plancher again. And to the midfield strike. So it'll be third down and three. So obviously, Skip Holtz, his plan right now. Todd Fitch, the offensive coordinator, up in the press box. Run the football, try to knock Western Kentucky off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, take a look at it now. Again, they're just this is the stretch play. And of course, Plancher does a nice job of cutting it back again. We're in that third and three uh, territory. Now, play action pass, or do they run it? That's the decision being made right now. Jamarcus Allen. The nose tackle following the play made the stop. Bulls need the Western Kentucky 47 for a first down. They jam the line of scrimmage, showing blitz. Here it comes. Yep, and, and that was a problem. They had a substitution issue. They were late getting the play off. There's no play. Forrest, snap, false start by the center. Five yard penalty, third down. Uh, and that penalty was directly the result of them racing to try to get that playoff and they were just uh, the play clock was down to one second so obviously that changes the complexion of the situation third and three becomes third and eight and the Bulls will go with four wide Bulls without Dontavia Bogan tonight out with a bad ankle still waiting on Sterling Griffin and AJ Love to get healthy Landy to the bottom of your screen. Bravo Brown to the top, third and eight. Good protection, and it's Bravo Brown who makes the catch. A perfect pass pocket for B.J. Daniels to operate from, and he puts the ball right on the money to Stephen Bravo Brown, the freshman from Fort Lauderdale. You know, you called it. I mean, that was excellent protection, and watch uh, B.J. Daniels. Now, he's got a great arm. Watch him step up in the pocket here and gun that thing right on a line to Bravo Brown. And for Bravo Brown, that's his first catch of the night. 
five different receivers with one catch apiece for the Bulls tonight. Here's the pitch to Plancher. Oh, a great cutback. And dragging tacklers all the way down to the 24-yard line. That's a 15-yard gain for Mo Plancher. And again, that, that weak toss play has been very, very good for the Bulls tonight. Excellent blocking by the dual tight ends here. Good job by Landy downfield getting after those corners. You can see the edge in the rush yards in the first half by the Bulls. Nearly 100 yards more than the Hilltoppers. Offset on. Plancher again. Plancher made a nice move inside the hole. Cut it inside on the pitch on the handoff to the right and takes it down near the 18-yard line. You know, and for a running back, the Plancher really is starting to get into a nice rhythm here. And again, very well blocked up front. There you can see big Samson Genus right there. Sims. All right, so Plancher will get a break. Demetrius Murray checks in. It's been a ground-oriented series for USF. Here's Murray. Reading his blocks beautifully, tripped up, nearly took it in. It's going to be first and goal inside the five for USF. And just like he did in the first half, Doug, Murray is impressive with that burst. Yeah, he is. And again, uh, Genus right there blocking back. That's the backside <laughs> The backside guard, uh, that was Jeremiah Ward. He got tackled. Watch the uh, 55 right here. Watch him get tackled right here. Wait a minute. You got, I don't have you got the, the wrong ball. guy. I don't have the ball. <laughs> line. So Murray tonight set to go over 100 yards, rushing the football. Power eye. Landy coming back to the formation. Murray spins in the hole. Give him forward progress down near the two-yard line. It's, it's going to be second and goal. And much like the, the drive that started the game by Western Kentucky that ended with no points, USF burning time off the clock. Very much so. That was uh, Kwan Jakes that missed the tackle right in space there. Good job by the running back. Two tight ends. The fullback, touchdown. Richard Kelly. Well, that's just what the doctor ordered for the South Florida offense. Come out, hammer time, let that offensive lineman uh, come off, get off the football, get some momentum going, get the running backs running north and south. Watch the fullback right here, 243 pounds. Nice job of lowering the pads and getting right in the end zone easily. Young man out of Bushnell, Florida, Richard Kelly. So Kelly with the touchdown, and the extra point is up and good by Eric Swartz. And finally, midway through the third, Bull fans breathing a little easier. Kelly caps a long run, Orient a drive with a two-yard touchdown. You ever have one of those nights when you can't get the phones to work? <laughs> Richard Kelly, two-yard touchdown run for USF, 14-0 over Western Kentucky, 8.33 to go in the third. So here we are virtually midway in the third quarter, and Western Kentucky about to touch the football for the first time. You know, and, and of course, uh, going back to the keys to the game, we said that Rainey, you know, he, he's been averaging 6.1 all the way through. Uh, we said S South Florida had to hold him to 4.0 or less. He's at one point seven for rushing attempts. Yeah, and it's not as if he stacked up those numbers against, you know, poor teams. He played some very strong teams early on. Here's McNeil. Good special teams effort by USF. First three games for Western Kentucky. Nebraska, Kentucky, and Indiana. Here's the touchdown. Boy, and again, you know, I, I hate to be uh, redundant here, but Samson Genus, wow. He is really impressive. Actually, he was out of there right there. That was a Kevin McCaskill. 11 plays, 82 yards, six and a half minutes. Kelly, a two-yard touchdown run, 14-0. So we'll see if Rainey can, can get something going. 
You know, score is 14 nothing. so Rainey and the running game still a factor here for Western Kentucky if they can get it cranked up. And here comes Rainey again. He's across the 20, out near the 21-yard line for a gain of three. Boy, Mark Snyder has brought the safety, John Legist, numerous times tonight. He was unblocked and made that play again. Of course, Doug is a big baseball fan, so in the last TV timeout, he nudged me to let me know that across town at the Trop, the, the Rays are winning. They're beating Seattle. Meanwhile, Boston is losing to the Yankees. If those scores hold, tomorrow a combination of a Rays win and a Red Sox loss would clinch the wild card for Tampa Bay. Here's Rainey again, slipping tackles, first down and more, takes it out to the 35-yard line. That's a gain of 14. Well, that's the, really the first time tonight he's really got loose for any any yardage to speak of, and he, he's had a bunch of big plays. I mean, this guy is a talented running back, folks. He's been shut down tonight, but believe me, he can really play. And there's a baseball connection to this game tonight. Many of the traveling party for Western Kentucky went over to the Trop last night to watch the Mariners play the Rays. The Rays Midwest League affiliate, the Hot Rods, is in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Jakes cranks it. And he was trying to get it to McNeil. Mr. Raymond had the coverage. Yeah, Mr. was in great position there. And, he, you know, Mr. Raymond is an interesting story. Former walk-on who's now a captain of this football team as a senior. He's played safety, he's played corner. Uh, you know, that takes something special for a young man to walk out of the program and then as a senior be the captain of this football team. Uh, quite a young man. A lot of nicknames on this team. His, yeah. his is skinny. Skinny, yeah. <laughs> Second and 10. Deep handoff to Rainey. Tries the left side. They've got a crack over there. And he takes it out to the 42-yard line for an eight-yard gain. We're at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida for college football on the Big East Network tonight. I'm Dave Weekly, alongside former Rutgers and head coach and longtime NFL assistant Doug Graber. And it's been a defensive-minded game, a game in which both teams have struggled offensively at times. 14-0, USF leads Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers have lost 23 games in a row. That is the longest current losing streak amongst FBS teams. Third down and two. Jakes. Pass is caught at the 39-yard line. A flag is down in the backfield. Reception was made by Marcus Vasquez. Very, very well-designed play. 69, offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, third down. Well, Luke Stansfield, the left guard, was called on the hold. He's subbing tonight, getting the start for the injured Michael Patterson, who's out with a neck injury. Well, uh, again, a well-designed play. Uh, let's see if we can see the hold right here. Oh, yeah, that was, that was, a, that was a full tackle. <laughs> So take that first down off the board. And now it's third and 12. Three wide. Graney shifts and is a wing to Jake's left. Boy, Jake's is good with that stop and go action. Well, you don't want to stop there. And give him progress to the 33-yard line, but to come into a complete stop right at the sideline, that's not a good place to stop. No, it really isn't. And, uh, you know, he had Vasquez wide open down the middle of the field if he could have spotted him, but he was running for his life right here. Can't ask him to do everything. No, right there, you want to get out of bounds. I'll tell you, that a guy can get hurt standing by that sideline. I promise Question. you. Hendricks Brakefield on for his fourth punt of the night. Shoots it out, a line drive kick that could be returned. Mitchell will field that ball. And he's got room to run right up the center of the field. Wow. One man to beat. Wow. Mitchell, what a move. Dragged down finally at the 15-yard line. That was a line drive punt that he took on one hop. And instead of breaking it to the outside, took it right to the center of the field for a big return. But 
Brakefield is trying to punt the football away from him. That's why he's hitting these line drives. But I'll tell you what, Terrence Mitchell, what a burst he showed. This is a true freshman now. I say he's locked up the punt return job for yeah. the year. What a move right there. Pretty good blocking, but I'll tell you what, he, he shows a lot of burst and a lot of really good instincts running in the open field. Dalton Sissel. Now check that, that was Cole Tischer with a touchdown saving tackle for the Hilltoppers. Here's Plancher to the 10. And you get the feeling, Doug, that the field is tilted downhill for USF right now. A touchdown here for the Bulls on a night in which Western Kentucky has been so offensively challenged. That might just be all that USF needs. Yeah, and of course, you're wearing down that Western Kentucky defense. I mean, you know, that, that offensive line is really coming off the football now. They've been on the field a lot. You know, in the third quarter here, and they're really getting worn down as well. Bravo Brown to the top. Daniels under center. Here's the handoff to Plancher, who's already got one touchdown tonight. Oh, man. Oh. Met in the middle of that line. Xavier's Boyd. Boy, Boyd has been big in there. You know, he, he made the tackle on the play previous to that as well. Boyd is, he's a freshman from St. Pete. Boyd's having a night. He was not in our two deep when we started the game tonight. Wow. Third down, third and about five. There's a free one. Offside, number six, <laughs> a contact. Penalty is half the distance, still third down. That's Mike, the Mike linebacker, Thomas Majors. S Samson Genus takes one for the club here. Yeah. <laughs> I think he had a problem with his helmet. I think that's why Genus was out on that uh, previous play in the last series. USF tonight, two of five on third down. Landy to the top of your screen. Bravo Brown to the bottom. Now this this is now this is third and very short. I, I wonder if they forgot that it was just half the distance to the goal line here. The ball was previously located at the eight-yard line. Half the distance puts the ball on the four-yard line. It's third down. Thank you. All right, there you go. <laughs> a little minor detail. Keep your eye on number 88, Andrea Shields. He's a tight end lined up to the right. Pass-catching tight end, a sophomore from Tampa. Out of the eye. Hand off to the fullback. Kelly spinning to the goal line. Does he have a second touchdown? The oh, he's going to be marked down just shy of the goal line. The big guy showed some balance and moves right there. Watch this. Watch him spin out Ooh. of this and, and really did a nice job keeping his feet. So Kelly's come alive in this new offensive right. look. He was, he was averaging one yard per yeah, carry coming yeah. in. He had one carry for one yard. The runner elbow was ruled down at around the four and a half yard line or three and a half yard line there for correction. We're going to measure for the first down. Wow. All right, let's, let's see if we can find that. Let's see if his elbow indeed. Yep, yep. good call. Good, very good call. Very good call by the Sun Belt crew. So starting to get late in the third, USF threatening to score another touchdown. Yeah, he's short just yep. by inches. What do, you, what do you call, David? What do you think? I say give it to the fullback again. Yep, Either I, the fullback or maybe fake it and toss it to Shields. Okay, let's see uh, Let's see what Todd Fitch comes up with here. You can't, and you know, on a night like this, you really can't go wrong with Plancher, can you? I think Plancher may be your best option. Well, you can leave the fullback in there. Kelly's averaging one yard of, for attempt. You only he only need only, one. He only needs a six inches. Well, we were yep. all wrong. It was 
was a keeper by Daniels, hey, and he's got it. The truth was, let Samson Genus move somebody <laughs> out and let your quarterback go right behind him. Good call by Todd Fitch. Your best offensive lineman, your best player on your offense, let him get it done. A genus this week was talking a little bit about. Yeah, watch Genus. Look at the movement. Nice job by the guards, too. That was an excellent job by Jeremiah Warren as well. Genus was talking earlier this week about how much fun USF had when they had their preseason camp at Vero Beach. And they really bonded. And Skip Holtz groomed each offensive lineman with a defensive lineman. And it really helped promote unity on the team. Here's Plancher. And this is a pretty good goal line stand right now, working by Western Kentucky. Plancher stoned at the one yard line. You know, Western Kentucky defensive coordinator Clint Bowen, uh, I'll tell you what, this, this, this defense has gotten better every single game as this season has progressed. We watched them on tape Friday, struggled early in the season, uh, started to come on last week. Uh, you know, even though they're down 14 to nothing, I think this defense has continued to improve. That was a good stop by Bo Adebayo, the junior from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Second and goal, Kelly. And he has stopped. Wow. They have still not cracked the goal line. It's third and goal. Young, right in the middle of things again for the toppers. Well, the penetration between the left guard and the center is really what killed that play. You know, this is a pretty good effort from a team that's lost 23 games in a row. Might be a, 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 might be a good time to do something with a toss or something, trying to get the ball a little wide. They're really stacked in the center. Third and goal. Daniels fighting forward. Touchdown, yep. USF. B.J. Daniels. There, there is a flag down on the field, but uh, I'm not sure if it's an it, it, yep. Well, nice job of B.J. Daniels keeping his feet working here because initially he was stopped. So Mitchell's big punt return sets up the one-yard touchdown run by B.J. Daniels. Swartz on to add another extra point. Puts it up and good. 150 to go in the third. Skip Holtz and USF with some breathing room now, leading Western Kentucky 21 0. BJ Daniels, one yard touchdown run. South Florida beat Western, leads Western Kentucky 21 0. A minute 50 to go. This was a 7-0 game at the break. Third quarter has been dominated by USF. They've dominated running the football and a, a big play by Terrence Mitchell on a punt return. Yeah, and, uh, and just a second earlier, that was Peter Boss, uh, quarterback coach, uh, talking with B.J. Daniels. And I, I think it's really important on, on USF's next possession that they let Daniels make some throws and, and try to get him going a little bit. Coach Taggart uh, not pleased at all with the developments here in the third quarter. Willie McNeil from the one across the 10. Still on his feet, and that's a good return. Takes it out to the 26 yard line, a 25 yard kickoff return. We'll step aside momentarily from Tampa. With but we'll come right back. USF leads Western Kentucky 21 0 late in the third. USF leads Western Kentucky 21 0, a minute 42 left in the third quarter. And dark during that media timeout, Willie Taggart had the entire Hilltopper team surrounding him over on the Western Kentucky sideline. Kind of interesting. I think he'll do a great job. I mean, he is so charismatic. Uh, tremendous energy, a lot of juice. Uh, he's a fun guy, and I think he'll do a great job. 
Bobby Rainey with a one-yard gainer. You know, there are only, amongst the 120 FBS teams, there are only 12 African-American head coaches, and three of them are first-year guys in the state of Kentucky. Taggart at Western Kentucky, Charlie Strong, the former defensive coordinator at Florida, is at Louisville, and Joker Phillips takes over for at, at UK for Rich Brooks. Well, that's a step in the right direction, no question about that. Here's Jakes, steps up, fires. That may be his best pass tonight out to the 42-yard line. Vasquez pulls it in. So Marcus Vasquez with the reception. Vasquez is a converted quarterback. Young guy out of Chula Vista, California. They're, they're in a three-deep zone here. And, and boy, you know what? That was his best throw of the night. He had some duress, too. Put that right on the money. And, of course, that was Quentin Washington on the coverage. It was a three-deep zone for South Florida. Dexter Haynes has checked in at a wide receiver for Western Kentucky. And there's McNeil, and he spins down to the 41-yard line of the Bulls, and that's a gain of 18. Well, uh, both of these last pass plays are, are a direct result of the Western Kentucky running game because South Florida is continually uh, get, you know, getting eight in the box that to stop the run, and that means you're in a three-deep zone, and that means that play is going to be there. And K1 Jakes with a couple of good throws back-to-back. -back. He's played the entire game. Western Kentucky really hasn't had any stability at the quarterback position since Justin Haddix. He was a four-year starter between 03 and 06. Jakes has had his moments tonight. And here he goes on the keeper, and he's got a first down down near the 30-yard line. This is the first time that Western Kentucky's had any kind of a drive since the opening drive of the game. That is the end of the third quarter. High bow. So the best drive, the best looking drive of the night for Western Kentucky will continue when we come back for the fourth quarter. 21-0 USF. Ready to start the fourth quarter here at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. South Florida with 14 points in the third period start the beginning of the fourth quarter, leading 21 to nothing for Skip Holtz. And you can see Mark Snyder, his defensive coordinator, on his right. Willie Taggart, first-year head coach, youngest coach, 35 years old in FBS football this year. Here's the pitch to Rainey. And he is just chased to the sideline. Tremendous defense by USF. Just too much Sante speed. Sante Spires. Yeah. Just too much total team speed on that defense. Very difficult to get any kind of toss play. And Mark Snyder, you see right there, we had a nice talk with him the other day, former head coach at Marshall last year. Really enjoying getting back and coaching, being a defensive coordinator and getting that relationship with the kids. He's having fun. It was funny, uh, interesting that while we were meeting with Coach Snyder, Dante Spires was in the film room the entire time <laughs> and uh, made a great play there for a loss of two. Here's Jakes. Steps up and fires. Pass is caught. It's Doyle the tight end. First and goal at the USF 8. You know, I, I don't know what Coach Taggart told to the whole team when he called him up, but he better remember it because this offense has come out. The quarterback uh, has made some outs. This, another fine play I mean he, he, he really let's be honest he did not look real good in the first no. half did K1 Jakes but he has looked outstanding this drive this and, is, and again that tight end is a heck of a player Doyle yeah Doyle's had a very good game Taggart is all about the catchphrases and one of them that he uses over and over is chase greatness and you'll catch excellence well Doyle caught that pass and it's first and goal here's McNeil in motion Pitch to Rainey, trying to left side. Blockers in front. USF stretches the play out very well, and they gang tackle him after a gain of maybe a yard. Wow, just so much speed on that South Florida defense. I mean, Barring 10 of the 11 defenders were there on that play. Look at the numbers. Yeah. Barrington's over there. Craig Marshall. Just watch the pursuit. Just watch the pursuit. Watch all of these kids run. Look at that. Look at all the white hats right there. Well, Skip Holtz said earlier this week that he felt the strength of this football team was his front seven. Yep. And that's quite a statement considering all the guys they lost to the NFL. 
That really speaks volumes to the depth of this uh, defensive football team. Got to believe this is four down territory for the toppers. Oh, 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 goodness. Wow. Another strong hit. Rainey is dropped, and that's Ryan Giddens. And Giddens, the sophomore from Sethner and Armwood High School. What a hit. Yeah, it was. Take a look at it. Watch Giddens. Watch the penetration here on the counter play. Wham! Right there, half to half. Boy, if they can get Giddens right, he will really help this defense. He missed the opener against Stony Brook with a, a foot injury. He played a little bit last week in Gainesville against the Gators. And you can see right there what kind of ability he's got. Third and goal. Play action. Got it. Jakes passes caught. And Raymond was able to make the open field tackle. He was all that stood between Kadeem Jones and the goal line. Great open field tackle by Mistral Skinny Raymond. Watch this. Nice. And as we anticipated, fourth and goal, Western Kentucky going to go for it. Under 12 minutes to play in the fourth. Vasquez is at the bottom of your screen. Went to an unbalanced. Pitch to Rainey. He's throwing the ball. Touchdown, Hilltoppers. Quinn Terrence Cooper with the catch. Halfback pass, clicks for six. Obviously, a Rainey must be left-handed. <laughs> we didn't know that coming in, but you found out right there. Very well designed play. Uh, went into an unbalanced bunch right here. Watch Randy set it up nice. Made a nice little soft toss. Wide open in the back of the corner of the end zone. Extra point goes off the upright. And that is significant for Tinius because he had made 33 in a row dating back to last year until that miss, 21-6. Rainey with the halfback pass to Cooper. The toppers on the board, but they still trail 21-6. Moon over Tampa Bay tonight, South Florida. Leads Western Kentucky 21 to 6, 11 and a half minutes to go. South Florida gave up their first touchdown of the night just moments ago. Tinius <laughs> with the miss on the extra point. That's the first one he's ever missed. He's had a tough night with three missed field goals. You know, and he's been so consistent yeah. coming into this game. In fact, captain of their special teams. And uh, just a very, very disappointing night. That's a real deflator after a touchdown. That was by far the best looking Western Kentucky drive of the game. And, and really, you know, I thought that uh, K1 Jake's, uh, I mean, he really made some throws on that drive. Pooch kick. Collected and taken out of bounds by Andreas Shields. We mentioned him, the pass catching sophomore tight end from Tampa. Technically plays what Skip Holtz calls the A position in right. their offense when a tight end splits out. Kind of like an H-back, a hybrid uh, kind of a guy. Nice job, by the way. That is not an easy play for a tight end uh, on that squib kick. Here's the touchdown again by the Hilltoppers. Very, very well blocked play, very well designed play. Caught him napping. Ten plays, 64 yards in almost five and a half minutes. When Terrence Cooper on the receiving end of that touchdown pass by Bobby Rainey. First carry tonight for Marcus Shaw, freshman running back. Flag on the field in the... Uh, Holding. Yep. Number 55 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty, still first down. So that goes against Jeremiah Warren. Well, the coaching staff here at USF trying to get some carries for all these talented backs. This is Western Kentucky and USF live from Raymond James Stadium. 
On the Big East Network, I'm Dave Weekly, alongside former Rutgers head coach Doug Graber. It's been a slugfest, actually. 7-0 USF at the break. More scoring here in the second half. Just over 11 minutes to go. Western Kentucky just scored their first touchdown of the night on their last possession, and the Bulls have the football. Here's B.J. Daniels doing what he can do. Takes it all the way out to the 25-yard line. You know, it, Dave, when, when B.J. Daniels comes out of that pocket, I mean, it's man amongst boys. I mean, he, he is just at a different pace than everybody else on the field. He's so explosive. And I still think it's very important uh, that B.J. Daniels makes some throws and makes some plays here tonight to get his confidence going. He really took the Florida loss extremely hard. Four wide receivers, trips to the top this time. First time we've seen this formation tonight from USF. Murray is the back. And Daniels breaks one tackle, but he can't break them all. Yep. And again, now that was a bust by Murray. No question, Murray went the wrong way. Yep. See, Daniels was upset with him right there. Third down, sets up third and 10. Thomas Majors with the tackle. And of course, you know, for B.J. Daniels, I mean, uh, you know, three of the top four receivers are out, and that's not easy to deal with either. And Dontavia Bogan unable to go tonight because of a sore ankle. Hopefully he'll play next week. It's going to be a little bit longer before Sterling Griffin and A.J. Love get back, however. Carlton Mitchell coming out earlier last year. That didn't help either. Nice Slant throw. pattern. Evan Landy up to the 32-yard line and makes this third down play a little bit more manageable. And this is a big third down coming up for Western Kentucky. Actually, I think it's fourth down now. Oh, it's fourth down now. Excuse me. Yep, so the punt team is on the field. Fourth down. So Justin brockhouse Khan comes on for the punt. So that was a good series by the defense for Western Kentucky. Boy, another great punt. And a fair catch is called for at the 20-yard line. And that was Donald Campbell, a freshman from Palmetto. One of the large number of Floridians on this Western Kentucky roster. 21-6, USF. Western Kentucky fans follow the men's basketball team to San Juan, Puerto Rico for the fourth annual Puerto Rico tip-off. November 18th through the 21st. Watch the Hilltoppers take on the North Carolina Tar Heels, the West Virginia Mountaineers, Tubby Smiths, Minnesota Golden Gophers, and more. For tickets and travel, visit PuertoRicoTipoff.com. The field for that tournament, obviously outstanding. Take a look, Minnesota, Nebraska, North Carolina, Vandy, West Virginia, and Western Kentucky, West Virginia won 30 games last year, went to the Final Four. North Carolina, you know, they're ready to bounce back. All part of that Puerto Rico tournament. First and 10 for Western Kentucky. Scored their first touchdown of the night on their last drive. Here's Jakes on the first down play action fake. Off to Rainey. And Rainey steps out of bounds at the 25-yard line for a gain of five. Second and five. You know, we, and we... Look at Western Kentucky, Doug, and think about their program being new anyway to, to FBS football. This is just the second year that they've been eligible for the championship in the Sun Belt Conference. This program at USF, this is just its 13th year. That's amazing, both of these programs. You know, in, in, in Western Kentucky, uh, <laughs> that is not an easy transition now. No. They, they've put $50 million into their stadium. And uh, they've got a great facility in there, of course, you see uh, Coach Holtz. And this is, th th the transition went a little easier for South Florida if for one reason, one reason only. Jim Levitt did a great job, but so much talent here in the state of Florida. One of the best runs of the night for Bobby Rainey. He's been hemmed in most of the night by this Bulls defense. He's bumped out of bounds up near the 38. That's a gain of 13. And again, just a straight, ISO play, missed tackle right there. Again, he is tough in space, stiff arm, knocked out right there by, of course, that was uh, legit. In Western Kentucky, they've got great sports tradition, great fans there. Last year, last week, rather, against Indiana, had over 20,000 at L.T. Smith Stadium. That was the second largest crowd ever. 
And LT Smith Stadium right next to the Diddle Arena, one of the classic college basketball venues in the country. It's a valuable member of the Sun Belt. Jake's on a play action. Stripped, intercepted. What a catch, Craig Marshall. Well, you know, Jake's was under a lot of pressure. And, uh, <laughs> boy, what, what a thrill for a defensive lineman. Take a look at the pressure. They brought the corner blitz from the backside. Excellent coverage down the field. That set it up. And uh, you know what? Hey, what a grab. What a grab right there by Marshall. Patrick Hampton was applying the pressure. And Craig Marshall, that's a great catch. Bounced off his face mask. And while being blocked. So after the turnover, here's Plancher. And he spins down near the 28. So that's four yards on first down. <laughs> Look at that smile. Yeah, that's oh, great. What a thrill for a defensive lineman. Well, Western Kentucky has lost 23 games in a row. But consider this, that since joining the Big East in 05, USF has won 21 of 24 non-conference games. Last four years, in regular season non-conference play, they are 15 and one, their only loss last year to Miami. Here's Plancher again. Breaking tackle, still on his feet. First down and more into the red zone, down to the 18 yard line. Well, you know what, that's just great running right there. I mean, that is just not say die, and he just kept pounding that football up in there. Terrific effort, watch Plancher. This is pretty well blocked, but most of this goes to Plancher. That's uh, two missed tackles. Nice job. You know, running backs have to have speed. They got to be tough. They got, you know what? They got to have a lot of heart. One back set this time. Corner blitz. No play action. I'll check that. A fake. And Daniels is lucky he did not fumble that football. Yeah, that was uh, Arius Wright, number 21, on the corner blitz. And, and, you know, they had it picked up, but he just he beat the full back inside and made the play. Take a look at it. You'll see it from uh, the left right here. Watch him come right inside right there. Again, Richard Kelly had him picked up, but Arius beat him inside. Comes out of a great high school program, Norcross High School in Duluth, Georgia. Second down and a dozen. Here's Plancher. Now oh, check that, that's not Plancher, that's Murray. Murray comes into the backfield for Plancher and takes it down near the 16. Now, now that's, that's gonna set up a third down now. I think it's really important for B.J. Daniels to make a play here. Now they're going at a much faster pace. We knew they would do it at some point in the game and they got Western Kentucky scrambling to get off the field and had to take a timeout. Fair and Horns came out of the lineup and Joel Miller came in. Timeout, Western Kentucky. That is their first charge in the second half. 30 second timeout. 30 second timeout. So the Hilltoppers with two timeouts left, 21 to 6. We'll take it with them. We'll step aside for a moment and come back. Bulls trying to put the finishing touches on a defensive minded victory. 21 6, five and a half minutes to go in Tampa. Twenty-one six, five twenty-eight to go. Fourth quarter. Skip Holtz in his first year at USF, closing in on win number two. You know he's been to four bowls in a row at East Carolina. Uh, South Florida has been to five bowls in a row. Perfect marriage. Not bad. Back to back, Conference USA championships at Eastern at East Carolina. Now trying to get it done at USF. I think there's a blitz coming. Yeah, you think? <laughs> that, 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 crossed, that crossed my mind. Yeah, the audible is coming right, right from the box. And you can do that when you have so much time on the play clock. Right. Here's Daniels. Little bubble screen inside to Miller, and he couldn't hold it. Yep. And, you know, and that's the play that you want against the blitz, but that Western Kentucky got uh, kind of tricky. They backed out of it. Fourth down. Yeah, they backed out of the blitz. 
Well, if you're a Western Kentucky fan, you're thinking, hey, we'll hold them to a field goal here. It's still a, a two touchdown game, two touchdowns and two two point conversions. We'll tie this game at 24 if we get there. Schwartz missed a, a relatively short field goal in the first half. This will be a 34 yard attempt from the right hash. <laughs> it's going to look like it went right down the pipe in the paper tomorrow. Hit the upright and bounced through. 34 yard field goal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Holy smoke. Well, the kickers have had a tough night here. It was interesting when we talked to Skip Holtz about the special teams unit earlier this week. He said that. The competition between Bonani and Swartz in the fall camp was intense. They each had 10 field goals they kicked every day. They kept count of all of them. At the end of camp, they had combined for 290 field goal attempts, and Swartz had a two-kick lead. Right. <laughs> so he got the starting job. It's his for now, 24-6. Yeah, Five nineteen to go in our fourth quarter. Western Kentucky about to get the football back. Still with a little bit of life. It's been a game that's been dominated though, Doug, by the defense of yeah, USF. Really, and I'll tell you, the, the Western Kentucky defense has stepped up tonight, and they have definitely improved. Yeah, they didn't look like they, didn't look like a defense that was giving up an average of fifty points a game. That's for sure. Yeah. A lot of, lot of young kids playing. They're going to continue to get better during the season. Western Kentucky will win some football games in the Sun Belt Conference. I don't have a doubt in my mind. Kickoff return across the 15 and out near the 20-yard line goes Donald Campbell. So Western Kentucky has two timeouts to work with. They need two touchdowns and two two-point conversions to tie this game. What was it about USF and their ability to stop Rainey that other teams could not do? Well, again, the speed of this defense is, is just amazing. And, uh, and they played a nice job by Mark Snyder. They played almost all eight-man fronts. They had a lot of safety blitzes. I mean, they were geared up to stop the running game. Rainey on the carry, takes it out to the 25-yard line for a gain of five, second down at five. Clock is running. Kind of believe that Western Kentucky is going to have to get into the hurry-up mode here. They've got to score twice. Good crowd on hand. Many of the students, though, have headed to the exits. They came out in force, though, tonight. No, that, that student section was packed. 12,500. There was the seat vacant that I could see. Now four. we have an empty set. Yeah, four wide right now on this snap. Second five. Jakes with good protection. And that is caught by McNeil. And he has got the first down out to the 41-yard line. That's a gain of 16. And you can That's see he has team really team got team some team wheels. Yeah, he does. And, and you know, uh, that was uh, Sabbath Joseph on the coverage. He had good coverage. I'll tell you, uh, K1 Jakes is growing up in the second half. He is a different quarterback than we saw on tape. He's certainly a different quarterback than we saw in the first half. I asked Willie Taggart about the recruitment of McNeil as Jakes goes back to pass, throws. That it's shot. McNeil again. Oh, he was one broken tackle away from going an awful long way. George Baker with a clutch stop for the Bulls. Watch the throw by K1 Jakes right here. I mean, he puts it right on the money between the eight and the six. McNeil had been recruited by the previous coaching staff. Jake's pass caught again. He has really shown some accuracy on this drive. I mean, that Dexter was another Haynes. great throw. So Haynes with a reception. It's another first down to the Bulls 25. Dexter Haynes. But Taggart went to McNeil's home in Bradenton and was very impressed with him. And he's been an impact player. Nearly intercepted. Sabbath Joseph made a great break back to that football. That was uh, Mike Linares. The 
bike backer from inside out and watch Joseph break from outside in. Uh, that's good recognition of who that tight end is, and we better get him covered. No timeout here. Jakes gets a word from Taggart, who is one of the best quarterbacks ever at Western Kentucky, one of only four players to have his football jersey retired there. Yep, number one is retired. Second down and 10. Jakes right, right down open. the seam for a touchdown. Jack Doyle, 25 yard touchdown. Well, that's a bust in coverage by either Lenaris or Sabbath Joseph. One of the backers had to carry him down the seam and uh, some confusion there. Take a look at it. Watch the tight end to your right. Makes a little outside move and breaks it right down the seam. Wide open. One of the backers has to run with that. So Jakes with the touchdown pass. Western Kentucky needs the two-point conversion yep, they're, here. They're going for two, and here comes another hustler. Now the play clock is down to 12. They're going to have to hustle here. They don't want to have to burn one of their two timeouts. Well, now the play clock is all the way down to five. I think they're going to have to call a timeout. And they do. Yep. That one was called from the sideline. Yeah, they had to. So that was unfortunate for Willie Taggart. But this is a big extra point in this game. Yeah, they get the two uh, the two point conversion here and, uh, and and put another drive like that together, and uh, we, we're going to have, have an exciting uh, last three minutes and forty six seconds. And again, you know, just looking back on things, the uh, so a two point conversion here would make it a two possession game, right? And that last field goal by Eric Schwartz that that bounced in. <laughs> is a kind of looming kind of yeah. important right yes, now. Yes, it is. Well, if you're Willie Taggart, you know, you don't want to talk about moral victories, but you got to be a very proud of the way your team competed tonight. Pushing yeah. USF into the fourth quarter. You know, there are a lot of USF fans who felt like they were going to see a lot of secondary personnel tonight, and that really didn't happen. You know, they come back to Florida next week. They go to Florida International. Yeah. And they start their Sun Belt play. So here's the two-point conversion. <clears throat> Got a bunch formation to his left. Rainey throwing back to Jakes. And it was Terrence Mitchell who stayed home. So Mitchell had the big punt return that set up a touchdown earlier here in the second half. And he stayed home and dropped Jakes. And we're seeing a lot of the, the uh, throwing of Rainey. He's already <laughs> thrown a touchdown, and here he throws back to the quarterback on a two-point attempt. Yeah, and, and you know what? And this is a great job by the freshman Mitchell. You said it, you called it, staying home, and made a nice open field tackle. 24-12. Well, with 3.46 to go and only one timeout, got to have the onside kick. Yeah, I would think so. That's their only shot. Good game for Mitchell. A lot of ties between the coaches on these teams. Defensive coordinator for Western Kentucky, Clint Bowen, was the defensive graduate assistant for Mark Snyder when he was at Minnesota. Yeah, and Mark Snyder's the defensive coordinator now for USF. And Snyder and Skip Holt's relationship actually predates Snyder's days at Marshall. Uh, it goes all the way back to when Snyder was on Ohio State staff. He was the co-defensive coordinator. And when Skip Holtz was coaching for his dad in the Outback Bowl right here in Tampa, when Ohio State lost to South Carolina. And well done by USF as they're able to get on that onside kick. And they've got great field position at the 42-yard line. Uh, special teams coach Vernon Hargraves would be happy. That was excellent execution. Of, uh, of defending the onside kick. Had the right guys in place there to get up high and get it on the high bounce kick. 
obviously here, ball security, very important for USF. Like to take some time off the clock here. I would think they don't want to snap it until it's uh, within five. Pass through the hands of T.J. Knowles, and in his defense, that was a real hot shot coming out of there from P.J. Daniels. You know, we're watching the development of the quarterback. Uh, Peter Voss, who coaches the quarterbacks, you know, he, he called uh, uh, Coach Rogers, who had Michael Vick in college, to get some advice because, I mean, this is a Michael Vick kind of a talent. He's such a great athlete. He's learning to be a quarterback. That play stopped the clock. Here's Murray, Demetrius Murray. And he takes it down near the 37-yard line of Western Kentucky. Carried by number 21, Demetrius Murray. Kevin Guidry, uh, the tight end who transferred from East Carolina, limps off after that play. You know, you take a look at these difficult early season non-conference games that Western Kentucky played. You know, there was really only one money game in this stretch. They got 800000 to go to Nebraska to open the season. But their series with Kentucky is a home-and-home home Sort of. They'll play two of the games in Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. The other two games will be played in Nashville, which is only an hour away from Western Kentucky. Indiana's a home and home, and this game is the second game that wraps up a home and home between yep. USF and Western Kentucky. Another carry by Murray, and well, you know, Western Kentucky won the one double A championship in 02 under. My great, great lifelong friend, Jack Harbaugh, father of Jim and John Harbaugh. And of course, Jim Harbaugh recruited, <laughs> I mean, the ties go on and on, Willie Taggart to come to Western Kentucky. Then Willie Taggart coached for Jim Harbaugh at Stanford and then came back to work. That's how the coaching thing yeah. works. I wonder what Jack Harbaugh's reaction was to the NFL fine to John Harbaugh for touching that official this week. Well, I talked to Jack this week. I didn't bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> Dropped in the backfield is Murray. Fourth down. I don't fourth down. So. so here's an opportunity for Western Kentucky to get the ball back with just over two minutes to play. You know, you got to admire the spunk of this Western Kentucky team, and that's in direct correlation uh, to their new head coach, Willie Taggart. He's got a lot of juice, and he's getting it all transferred to this team. First and ten. Well, obviously, when you think of Western Kentucky, it, it, for older guys like me, the first thing that comes to my mind is the year that Western Kentucky made it to the Final Four with Big Jim McDaniel back in the early 70s. They have a great basketball tradition at Western Kentucky. I think the Sun Belt Conference is going to be good for this program as far as football goes. Jakes. Right down the seam. Oh. Should have been intercepted. That was uh, Legist. Yep, he had both hands on the football and couldn't close it. Sophomore yep. from Delray Beach. Good underneath coverage. Forced the overthrow by Kevon Jakes. Take a look at it here. Watch good coverage underneath. And there's the overthrow. Safety's got to make that play. Had a great opportunity there. Second down and 10. Down by 12. 2.04 to go. Fourth quarter. A little bit more scoring here in the second half. This was a 7-0 USF lead at the break. Pass incomplete. Pass was intended for number Jakes nine, doesn't have Doug, what you would call the classic drop back motion. You know, not at all. But again, this offense is going to be a work in progress. But I, he really shocked me in the second half. He made some terrific down the field throws. Uh, not he's not a classic thrower, but he got the football there and on time. Third and ten. Three man rush. Jake's going to tuck it, avoids one tackler, and it's going to be fourth down and two. Yep. We're at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. Big East Network College Football, Western Kentucky against the USF Bulls. I'm Dave Weekly, alongside former Rutgers head coach Doug Graber. It's been a defensive-minded game. Scoring, more scoring in the second half. And as you can see, USF closing in on their second victory of the year fourth down this could be it for the Hilltoppers Rainey struggling forward if he got that he got it all on his own as he goes off the right side 
this may be close it's, enough to measure. It's very close. And, and really, uh, the just uh, came in and really stuck a shoulder in there at the very end. Uh, I think to keep him from getting the first down as I look at it from right here, it's going to be close, though. If you want to talk about defensive stars for USF, there have been a bunch tonight. Lattimore's been all over the field. Sam Barrington. Mr. Raymond, also a very strong game. It's a first down. Wow. You know, Craig Marshall made the huge oh, interception. Yeah. Oh, he'll be talking about that for days. And Logist has made a lot of nice plays in run support. Terrence Mitchell. So first and 10 for Western Kentucky. 79 seconds left in our game tonight. Got some young players now on the field on this uh, USF defense. USF's mini tour against the Sun Belt will continue next week as they host the Owls of Florida Atlantic University. Pass incomplete. Intended for Willie McNeil. You know, that they brought the blitz that time, had pressure on the quarterback, had to get rid of the football. Yep, right there, a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Dante Spires. Yep. He was studying that film the other day. We were in yeah. the room with him. Spires is just another one of the athletes on the defensive side of the ball for USF that can just flat out run. Very quick defense. Jakes puts this one up. Going long, incomplete. Trying to get it to Vasquez. Terrence Mitchell right there all over it. Excellent technique. Turned his shoulders inside. Never lost, just like he coached it as a secondary coach. Very well done for a freshman. Running for him, running with him, stride for stride. Third and ten. This will be really interesting now for South Florida as we get, uh, you know, one more uh, preseason game, as I call them, before they get to the uh, Big East schedule opening with Syracuse here on uh, October 9th. Here's Syracuse, much improved. Here's Jake's pass tipped, incomplete. Baker coming hard for the football from the secondary, the closest to the ball. And Jake's knocked down again. Yeah, he's, he's been uh, bruised uh, by this. This is a four-man rush, fi five. The backer, oh, wow. The backer uh, had a delay blitz, uh, but you have a hard time telling that Jake, to Jake since that was delayed. He took a shot. Fourth down. Fourth and ten for Western Kentucky. Let's Jakes hit as he throws incomplete intended for Rainey and Jakes is slow to get up K1 Jakes slowly heading to the sideline now he's up and moving okay now but boy he has taken a bunch of shots tonight that was Hampton right there yeah Patrick Hampton with the pancake so this is uh, every coach's favorite formation, I would imagine, coming. Yeah, and we got uh, uh, Bobby uh, Eveld in at quarterback, the uh, true freshman. So he'll get a chance to get a – that's B.J. Daniels still in there. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. So B.J. with the handoff to Murray, and he stopped after a gain of about a yard. So Murray got the majority of the work tonight, but Mo Plancher had his highlights. Five, and Plancher coming out onto the field now. Clock running down to about 30 seconds to play. Western Kentucky does have one timeout if they choose to use it. Yeah, I don't think they will. And, uh, and you know, South Florida is going to have to have a snap up one more time here. B.J. Daniels with the handoff. This is Mo Plancher. Plancher goes off the left side, and that is going to be a four-yard gain, and that is going to be it for our game tonight. 24-12 is your final score. Skip Holtz and the Bulls of USF now 2-1 and one on the campaign. Willie Taggart and Western Kentucky dropped to 0-4. They have lost 24 consecutive games, but you can see the improvement coming.
Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what Mark Snyder told uh, Coach Taggart right there. Uh, he, he really should be proud of his young men tonight. They gave a great effort here. Uh, this is going to be a team. Uh, believe me, that that's that losing streak is going to be over soon. Game that was dominated defensively by USF. Second half, Western Kentucky kind of got into a rhythm throwing the ball, but that's really not their game, Doug. Their their game is more power football with Bobby Rainey, and Rainey really never got it cranked up. No, he really didn't. And, and credit. You know, Mark Snyder uh, had, a, I thought, a great game plan. I mean, he knew he had to take a rainy. Nobody else has, has done that. Nobody has done that all year, and, and he really, I think he averaged 2.3 per rush, did a great job against him. All right, B.J. Daniels, the starting quarterback for USF, joins us now down <laughs> on the field. B.J., congratulations on the victory. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. What was your evaluation of the team's offensive play tonight? Uh, we did a very good job running the ball and moving up and down the field. Um, there's a couple things we need to work on, and uh, we're going to go in, go in uh, the film room and, and, and get, get it corrected. All right, and as far as uh, the off week and the loss to Florida, any residual effects of that at all? Uh, no, not really. Uh, you know, we there's a lot of things we learned from that game, and uh, we were just trying to improve and, and just work on the little things and, and come out and have a good game. B.J., uh, talk to me a minute about the, the new offense now that's come into South Florida, all new uh, terminology, a lot of different personnel groupings. Are you starting to feel comfortable with that now? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, me and Coach Fitch, Coach Voss, and uh, Coach Voss have sat down a lot and, uh, you know, just talked about the little things, the things, things that I need to learn and know, um, you know, just to help this team improve. And you really didn't have your full complement of receivers tonight. You're still waiting on Sterling Griffin and A.J. Uh -huh. Love and Dontania Bogan was unable to go tonight. What about the guys you had on the field tonight catching your passes? Uh, Bravo Brown um, and Evan Land did a good job today. Uh, Evan's Mr. Sure hands. You know what? Uh, I, I don't think there's too many people who would like to go up against that defensive front four in practice. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those guys, they, they really come after the ball. Um, you know, Craig Marshall and... Uh, definitely Ryan Giddens, those guys out there, it's giving me some trouble. All right. Well, hey, we appreciate your time tonight. Outstanding game. We'll see you next week against Florida Atlantic. All right. Thank you. All right. That's B.J. Daniels, the starting quarterback tonight for USF. Doug, evaluate his performance tonight. Well, you know, he's a work in progress. I mean, he's a great athlete like we've talked about. It's He can really run. You know, he's got a very good arm. Uh, I, I think that he still uh, is a work in progress. He's got to learn how to scramble, and I think they have to do a lot of work with the receivers working with him when he does scramble. All right, Skip Holtz, the head coach of USF, joins us now. Skip, congratulations on the victory tonight. What were your early impressions of the way your team played? Uh, I was really proud of the way the defense played. I thought they came out, they played physical. They really did a nice job against a football team that uh, has really been running the ball. And they had a little different game plan with what they were doing, but I thought the defense played really well. Offensively, we ran the ball, and they were trying to do some different scheme things and playing a little bit more man coverage. Obviously, I would too if I had a walk-on receiver that was starting a wide receiver. <laughs> you know, I mean, when you look at all of a sudden, Bogan's down, he got hurt in the Florida game, and you've lost uh, those other three when you lost from last year, Carlton Mitchell, and then you lost Sterling Griffin and A.J love so right now we're working progress out on the perimeter and I it's something we got to turn and we got to go straight and we got to keep working on it some of those younger guys are developing but we got just got to keep coming and we decided to put the saddle a little bit more on the offensive line tonight a little bit too inconsistent for what we were trying to do but there were a lot of positive things to build on you find a way to get the win and you move on to next week you know coach I thought that uh, that uh, coach Snyder had a great game plan to uh, stop the Rainey is a heck of a back he, he didn't is. get to show it tonight he only averaged 2.3 per rushing attempt tonight had been averaging 6.1. Talk about that. Well, and he was averaging 6.1 against Nebraska. Kentucky rushed for 184 yards against Kentucky, and I thought the defense really did a nice job. And we said we're going to come in here and we're going to play physical up front. And uh, the defensive coaches put a great game plan together, and we we're doing a little bit of movement up inside. But uh, overall, I thought the defense played really well. You know, there at the end, we gave up that one ball down the middle of the field on a little, you know, little kind of out and up type of thing up the middle but uh, outside of that I thought the defense played really well and I thought they played physical up front Rainey is a great back and this is a good football team they'll win a lot of football games but just unfortunate with with the way we the way we played on offense and some of the things we did skip one last question you mentioned your offensive line I thought when you took the third quarter kickoff and just ran the ball Mo Plancher pounded the ball and got that touchdown did you think that was the moment you took control of the game? Well, I just thought we, we got it. That's where our experience is. We got to put the saddle there. You know, B.J. is an excellent athlete. He's a very good quarterback, strong arm, 
doing a lot of great things and he's improving every week. Uh, but right now we got to be able to win outside one on one, you know, and we're going to see what we're going to see by a lot of people we saw tonight. Uh, people are going to load up and say, beat me at wide receiver. Uh, and that's not easy to do with where we are right now. we got to get some guys healthy, and hopefully Sterling and, and Bogan are going to be back here in the next week or so, and we'll see where we go. All right, Skip, congratulations on the victory tonight. Best of luck next week against Florida Atlantic. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, that's Skip Holtz, head football coach at USF. 24-12, your final. We'll take a break, come back with some post-game highlights and some thoughts from our analyst, Doug Graber. It's a final now from Raymond James Stadium, USF 24, Western Kentucky 12. Is that up here? I want to see the most college football. So I ordered ESPN Game Plan. I get up to 15 out-of-market games per week. The top conferences. And key matchups. Games you can't get anywhere else. And the games I want to see. Contact your local pay-per-view provider or go to ESPN.com slash game plan for the best college football action today. Your source for the best gridiron coverage is College Football Live. Our team is on the pulse of the game, bringing you analysis. If they lose this game, they're definitely out of the national championship talk. Breaking news, highlights, and big game predictions. I'm going big red, baby. Plus, we go deep for exclusive interviews. The secret is out, my friend. <laughs> and unique features that will keep you wanting more. Let's go, guys. Come on. College Football Live, weekdays at 4 on ESPNU. All right, it's all over in Tampa, where USF defeats Western Kentucky 24-12. to You see the scoring by quarters. It was the third quarter in which USF got two touchdowns on the board. They took control of the game 21 to nothing and held on to win 24-12 to in a defensive-minded game, Doug, that, you know, you take a look at USF and their offensive production. I don't think Skip Holtz is going to be <laughs> totally pleased with the way his offense performed tonight, but they got the W. They have one more non-conference game next week against FAU before they jump into the Big East. I think he's got to be overall pretty pleased with the way things are going. Well, he is, but I'll tell you what, you know, it's very frustrating as a coach, and, and you could sense that uh, right after the game. Uh, they have a problem right now. I mean, three of their top four wide receivers are out. They were thin anyway uh, coming into the season, and, uh, and, and he's exactly right. Uh, that's what they're going to get now the rest of the year. People are going to blitz them and get after them. They're going to man up the outside receivers. They're not going to be afraid to do that. And they've got to come up with some answers. I think that, uh, you know, looking at it from an outsider in, I think one of the things they're going to have to do is start to run some more option football and zone read stuff with B.J. Daniels. But you know what? That's kind of scary, too, because they have very little depth at the quarterback position to have a freshman walk-on player uh, behind B.J. Daniels. So they've got some problems offensively, uh, and, and there's not going to be an easy fix. So you got to keep B.J. Daniels healthy before you start the Big East season, and they've got to get through the FAU game next week before they start conference play against Syracuse. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights of this game, and we'll start in the first half. And there were miscues all over the board, uh, opportunities for both teams to score, and then finally, with just over five minutes to go before the half, Mo Plancher, a 13-yard touchdown run. What a huge hole. Yeah, it was, and a, and a really well-blocked, of course. And here's B.J. Daniels uh, getting it to the fullback, Kelly, sticking it in the end zone. Great effort there. But it's Samson Genus, and he's a monster at offensive center. He is really something. Rainey right there that really kind of caught him napping with a halfback pass. Yeah, and then he got to Cooper, and then he was able to get that pass to Jack Doyle. Doyle continues to impress. He's a very good-looking tight end for Western Kentucky. That young man is just a sophomore, but he is going to be a one fine tight end. He is already in college football, 6'6", uh, just an excellent athlete. Well, I think when Willie Taggart, the head coach at Western Kentucky, takes a look at the film of this game, he's probably going to sense this is the most complete game they've played so far this season. Now they have a week off, and they'll come back down to Florida, head down to Miami, and open up Sunbelt Conference play against FIU. Doug, I agree with you. You made this point during the broadcast. This team, Western Kentucky, they've lost 24 consecutive games, but they are improving each week, and they're going to win some games in conference play. Uh, you know what I'm impressed with? Uh, they, th that team has a lot of juice. They play with a lot of energy. 
Uh, they're well coached. They're just really, really young, and they don't have much depth. Now, if they can stay somewhat healthy, I mean, <laughs> they'll win games in the Sun Belt. There's not a doubt in my mind. And I can't tell you how impressed I am uh, with Willie Taggart, the staff he's put together, his personality, his juice. Uh, I think he's going to be a great fit for that program. Well, Bobby Rainey was able to go over 100 yards at Nebraska, at Kentucky, at home against Indiana of the Big Ten. But tonight, the USF defense really shut him down. Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, it, it just amazes me how, how this defense can lose five players that make it in the NFL and retool and come back and be a very good defensive football team again. And I thought Mark uh, Snyder had an excellent uh, game plan, put eight in the box, uh, got Legist up there, who, who's a very good run stopper, uh, had a lot of run down blitzes. I mean, nobody has shut down Rainey or, or even come close to it. They did it tonight, and that was the key to the victory. Doug, there's really no way to sugarcoat it that in the non-conference portion of the season, as a conference, the Big East has taken a pounding this season uh, to this point. But, you know, if you're USF and you're taking a look at the results of some of these games, you got to think you are right in this race. Uh, they really are. Uh, I don't think there is a dominant team in this conference. I, I, I've done a Rutgers game. I've done a UConn game. I would put, you know, South Florida right with those two teams. Uh, you know, Syracuse is still in the rebuilding mode. Cincinnati's had some problems. Uh, Pitt didn't look very good the other night, uh, obviously, against Miami, who's a very good football team. And West Virginia, we'll see how they do tonight later against LSU. There's an awful lot to like when you take a look at USF, and I think Skip Holtz talked about it when we talked to him briefly after the game. It all starts up front. Uh, their offensive line is a superior group of guys, very veteran players. They've combined for 78 starts. They, they've been able to protect Daniels to this point, and they were able to open up some holes tonight for Demetrius Murray and Mo Plancher. If there's a better center in this country than Samson Genus, I'd like to see him. I mean, he is a monster. He is a beast inside. He is an outstanding football player, and uh, he's only got one problem. He's a senior. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back to Tampa with more. It's over here at Raymond James Stadium where USF moves to 2-1. and one. They beat Western Kentucky tonight 24-12. NFL tomorrow as the Steelers will take on the Tampa Bay Bucks. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the final numbers from this game. And this was a game that was dominated defensively by USF. Bulls got it done. They, they were pitching a shutout at the break, 7-0. They had a 21-0 lead before Western Kentucky put some points on the board. And the Bulls were able to uh, hold Western Kentucky to 88 yards, and that's almost half the number that Rainey was averaging per game coming into this contest. Yeah, and again, you know, that's Nebraska, Kentucky, and Indiana. I mean, that's no fluke. That is just a fantastic job by the South Florida defense. And, of course, you know, they're playing a lot of eight-man fronts. I mean, you're, you're going to get hit a little bit in the passing game and, and give Western Kentucky credit. They did that, getting 225 yards. Well, take a look at the passing yards. For USF, no Dontavia Bogut, no Sterling Griffin, no A.J. Love. Those guys are coming, but they weren't here tonight. USF was able to throw for only 57 yards and comfortably win the game. Well, you know, it, it was a little scary in the first half, and, I, and I've, I've been there. I understand that entirely. Uh, 222 rushing yards, and you heard, uh, you know, Coach Holtz talk about it. Hey, fellas, this is what we are right now. Let's get good at it and let's do it. We're, we're not going to be a down the field throwing team. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I, I don't want to put a knock on the wide receivers, but they're, they're freshmen and young guys, and they're just not ready for that load. So put it on the offensive line, put it on Samson Genus. You got some good running backs, get after it. Talk about your deceiving stats. Western Kentucky with more total yards tonight. They were in a, uh, the mode of being behind the majority of the game, so that's why they were throwing, especially in the second half. Penalties, you know, I take uh, I take my hat off to Willie Taggart and their crew to come on the road after losing 23 games in a row and only have 35 yards in penalties. That's a pretty good job. Yeah, especially with all the freshmen they're playing. I mean, they're playing a ton of freshmen on defense, on offense, all over the place, and uh, that is a good job. But really, the, it was a pretty uh, well-played game in terms of the penalties, a little bit sloppy by both teams in the first half, and then they kind of seemed – uh, to settle in, and, and I thought offensively both of them played much better in the second half. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some scores, and we'll take you around the Big East first of all, where games earlier today, 
it was Connecticut bouncing back. They beat Buffalo 45-21. And UConn's one of those teams. You've seen them, Doug. Uh, they're right in this race, too. Yeah. Excellent offensive line, excellent running back, play sound defense. Uh, you know, they, they still have a way to go offensively throwing the football. And uh, the Big East continues to struggle against teams from the other BCS conferences, at least to this point. Rutgers played well but came up short against North Carolina, the ACC, 17-13. That was a game that was a one-point game for quite a while. And like I say, you don't want to deal in – Moral victories, but Cincinnati, the two-time defending champion of this conference, they were down big to Oklahoma and came.